All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is the Panda of Pandemonium. Y'all know what it is. It's Absolute Pandemonium Podcast. It's another Saturday evening of random stuff. <laughs> we got vocab. We have our guest today, Mr. Nick, the composer, Raimi. What's up? This what's man up? is, he is literally the older brother I never had. Aww. Like. He's amazing. He's amazing. So I appreciate you being able to jump in. Uh, we're still Thank waiting you. on Rod. He should be here in a minute, as well as Jay. As far as I know, everybody should be here. So it's going to be a very, very, very interesting day. Um, we actually may also have one more guest coming, and that'll be even funnier if that occurs. So um, today, as always... We're going to have some randomness. Uh, we're going to have some serious topics as well. The serious topic for the day is going to be toxic masculinity, and we will get into that in depth later on. But uh, for now, let's go ahead and start with uh, some of the lighter stuff. Um, were either of you Star Trek fans? Uh, This brown nerd right here. <laughs> was a big old Star Trek fan. Uh, there's an angle with one of my cameras in here. You can see I actually have uh, Ben Cisco up on my shelf. Oh yes, Cisco <laughs> was he was truth. The, the most was underrated. Truth. Oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Oh, uh, right. I was a Star Wars guy, man. You was Star Wars. Yeah, I was, <laughs> uh, my mom though crazy tricky. So that's, that's who got me into it. But right. yeah, uh, Star Wars. No, no shade on Star Wars. It's do, do you like uh, high fantasy or diplomacy? That's just the the choice between yes. the two. Right. <laughs> I can respect that. That's that's really what it is. See, and I'm in the middle. Oh yeah, so I like both. I'm not gonna lie. The reason I brought it up though is. One of the originals, um, she, in my opinion, she was the original baddie in Star Trek world, <laughs> Lieutenant Ohura. Oh, yeah, 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 um, yeah, yes. I think I got some images for uh, let's see here, let's see if I can oh, run some images. <laughs> I got some images, bro. I got some images. Oh, behave yourself. We're talking about toxic masculinity today. We yeah. are, we We're are. Talking. However, <laughs> um, see, when it comes to Lieutenant Ohura, like you gotta admit, I mean, she was bomb. She was just, she was just bomb. Um, the reason I bring her up though is this past week on um, the third, they she's going to her last convention. She went to her last convention. Oh wow! Um, she is now, I believe, 86, 89. As of the 28th, she'll be turning 89 this month. Okay. Uh, so this was like her farewell mm -hmm. con right. in LA. Oh, yeah. Um, infamous. Welcome, 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 sir. What's up? <laughs> Just in time. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was her last like con. Two seconds. No, you're good, man. She was from the original, of course. For those who don't mm -hmm. know, Lieutenant Nyota Uhura <laughs> was in the original Star Trek series. Uh, she was the first prominent black woman that start on TV period as a coast as like a main co-star. Um, and they had a three day like event in her honor. So if you want to go check out some of those images and some of the images where I'm getting these from, it's uhura. I like that image right there. And uhura. Mm -hmm. Space. Uh, those were the two sites that I, that had a lot of information about her, the convention and the images and kind of what they did. But uh, one thing I didn't know, she voiced herself in a couple of the cartoons too. Yeah, I yeah. didn't know that. Like she, she she put in a lot of work behind the scenes, especially you know uh, on like the advocacy end and stuff too. But I mean, mm -hmm. her character was like in, multilinguist, extremely oh, yeah. intelligent, like could learn a language just like that, translate, get the right dialect and everything nailed down. And it's great, even in the newer movies, how they portray that same character with that same. Uh, Energy and intensity background yeah yep yep it so i was it was funny because i didn't know this this one thing came out to me as well and i was like yo so she was gonna quit i guess 
um, at one point, and the day she dropped off her letter of resignation, she ran into Dr. Martin Luther King at an NAACP fundraiser. <laughs> and Dr. How King was it like, is. yeah, no, I'm like one of your biggest fans. You can't do that. Like, you don't understand. Like, he, his words were specifically, when we see you, we see ourselves. We see ourselves as intelligent and beautiful and proud. And oh, yeah. she said that next day, she went back to Gene Roddenberry and was like, yo, so MLK said X, Y, and Z. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and like I'll to show equality in that way in that era too. Like, you know, one yeah. day we're going to be standing side by side, you know, phasers up, trying to stand against the, uh, unspeakable odds and horrors. So, you know, we should be together through all of this. Oh, yeah. They actually also shared her and Shatner shared the first interracial kiss on television. Oh, oh my so God. that was a huge. Yes. Oh, man, you can kiss a brown person. You don't catch on fire. Amazing. It, amazing. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> big, big facts, they, they were scared of all that hot mess. Like you might catch a disease and all that dumbass stuff from I back in the day. I on fire when I kiss black men. <laughs> but that's different. That's a different type of heat. That's exactly. a passion. Uh, that's uh, the right. <laughs> what kind of fire? Uh, Dude, I got three kids. I, feel I need you. some details. Oh, details about what? Which part? Which part? on the wrong kind of fire. He said he still came on fire. See, I'm, see, no, 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 I'm no, done no, with y'all. That's <laughs> right. He's like, one cup. You keep I'm one sorry, cup. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> oh, man. So, shout out to her. Um, I, I did hear also, though, she is slowly one of the reasons that she's um, she's battling with dementia right now. Yeah. Um, so, this is why this was her last one. Um, and she's also going through some, some court stuff with her old manager and her son. Because I guess the old manager's been living in one of the guest houses and kind of like mooching. And the son's like, oh, heck no, nah, we're not doing this. So, <laughs> like, what are you managing? She's 80 so, some years old and she barely remembers right, where her like, house is. Done. Shouldn't you move out now? Listen, exactly. Tyler, we're going to need you to step out, please. It, yeah, yeah, it's a little bit. A little, little bit. bit. So, that's that's her. I wish her, I hope she ate, she has aged gracefully. And I hope that the rest of her life is just amazing just for what she's done. She's actually one of the biggest uh, promoters and she helped push that. Uh, what was it? Space advocacy program mm -hmm. back when it first started um, with who was the first female astronaut again? Uh, oh, gosh. I had her name here. Do, do, do. Sally Ride. Dr. Mm -hmm. Sally Ride. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were Funny part of that story. first big push. Yo. Funny story, I had an argument with my mama about her, and I'm trying to explain to my mama that that's not Sissy Tyson. <laughs> I thought she was Sissy. Yeah, that's, that's what she thought she was for the long time. Oh, mama, that's not the same person. I promise you it's not. Oh, wow. Uh, pretty much same legacy, but not the same person. Right, 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 right. Very much close legacies, but not the same person. Oh, man. <laughs> man. Hey Monica, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Glad to have you. So yeah, definitely that is definitely definitely a <laughs> not the same person type situation, you know. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we are that that like I said, her what she did. I can only wish to have that much of an impact. Mm, no, you kidding. know what I mean with with what I do in any capacity. She is and has been a model, a model for everything. I was gonna say model citizen, but that doesn't seem like the right word. Role so <laughs> you know what you mean. We know what a you mean. Role model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all know what I mean. Y'all know what I mean. So, uh, but that that was that was one of the first key pieces I definitely wanted to touch on. Like I said, uh, if you guys want to get more information regarding that, uhura u h u r a dot com or uhura um, dot space. One of those two, those were kind of like the you can get they've got memorabilia from her um, her last convention, like her 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 toys and the pictures of her and everything from from the show. All that's on there. So please feel free to go check that out. No, we're not. Uh, you know, we don't get anything from it. It's just support, support your black people, support your people. That's grandma. Yo, that's GG. You, <laughs> you support Bye, her. Mm -hmm. all right so um the next topic i wanted to hit on real quick oh, wait, before you move into the next topic oh, go know, for it. 
you know vocab gotta uh do his typical oh things. he does yes vocab <laughs> you've been you've been gone bro we had to, we had to start doing I, stuff without I, I, you bro oh, sorry i'm gonna be <laughs> all people who come so today we on stout you know and today's anime is in toxic masculinity a bunch of anime women just in the party. <laughs> I was just gonna say something about that, but today I'll yeah. be on the Amsterdam and cranberry juice. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, I'll so, be stepping back with some whiskey in just a bit. All Here right. We go. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, well, wait, I'm not getting left out of this one. Has something too. <laughs> well done. Well done. Um, I didn't grab the pictures for this, so I apologize. That's my fault. I got caught up with some other stuff. But earlier this week, I found out, and let me know if you all knew this. I found out that Star Lord is now the son-in-law to Terminator. Oh yeah, you told me that. Yeah. So I need you all to think you about that Lord? for a second. Or you mean Chris Star Lord? I mean the person it's playing him. Yes, of course. Okay. Oh, no, oh, no. Is that in the somewhere? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what, what, yeah, no, I me? guess uh, Chris. Yeah, I guess Chris married Schwarzenegger's daughter last year. So, oh, that's good. Did not know that. <laughs> yeah, I had no clue. I was like, okay, cool. That's what's up. So, yeah, I was just, was I was just trying random, to imagine like a child of a Schwarzenegger. Like that's right. That's a big right. old head, man. That's a big old dome. I mean, Yo. no, no hate. I'm like, I'm a, I got a big old melon. I mean, I have his image pulled up. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I just like Chris Pratt. Yeah, I should have had that one. That's her my fault. Is like. So many corny jokes after another one in the house. There's so many. Like, legit. So like, many. Legit. Just like, first thing pop in my head, Chris Pratt goes to the bathroom. Like, Hold on. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Pratt is that, and you know he's that, that guy. Too. He, he has to have done it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's funny. There's only one person with Chris Pratt when it comes to stuff like that. Well, two. Neil Patrick Harris. Uh, yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I would love to see a movie with them three. Like just his, just his buddies, like a buddy cop, yeah, or something like that. No, yeah. Wait, I, I do one better. The um red what is the movie that just came out on Netflix. Oh yeah, uh, add, mm -hmm. add them two to it. Oh wow, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. true. That's a good one. Rod, hey, what guys. up? Glad to have hey. you back, man. Hey, hey. <laughs> so we were just kind of picking through some stuff. We were just talking about uh, Lieutenant Hora, uh, Miss Nichelle Nichols, who uh, had cheated her last convention just recently this past weekend so we were talking about that and then we talked about uh the terminator is now the father-in-law to star lord if you didn't know <laughs> oh wow right right that face that yeah. face exactly i think all of us had that shock that that look <laughs> yep yeah it's like oh well all I right you're talking about comic book watch <laughs> Dude, oh my that God. would be a whole oh, other thing if that happened like that imagine getting a phone call from your father-in-law like on thanksgiving like bring the plates <laughs> you forgot Don't the plate. The you forgot the, the dessert. Where's the pumpkin pie? Get to the kitchen. <laughs> Get to the kitchen. <laughs> oh no. So That's she gorgeous. Um, I got a picture. Okay, I put up a picture. Pictures. See, see if I can. Is it? That's Here. the first one that popped up. There you Man. go. Hold up. There you are. They oh, are a cute wow. couple. Yeah, I will say that they are a very cute couple. They actually look like, like siblings. siblings. <laughs> you said they look like siblings. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Her name is Catherine. Not they all look alike. <laughs> See, that, now play hey, nice. It, it, came out, it came out of the dark. What can I say? It came out of the dark. Wouldn't that make oh, sense man. for the Terminator franchise, though? The, what'd you say? Terminator franchise? Yeah, it would make sense if they looked alike. <laughs> I will see what had happened was, right? <laughs> daggone, daggone. We're all going to Speaking jail. Speaking of Terminator, I don't know if I posted it in a group chat. Y'all yeah. know I found like a whole bunch of stuff on TikTok. Right. Somebody did a fan theory on Terminator and the Matrix. Ooh. Um, which is the fan theory is Neo is um actually Sarah's son or grandson. Oh, okay. Oh, actually fighting inside of the network. 
Yes. Wow. So they, like, I'm going to find the video and I will send to y'all. I got to go back and look. Yes, but please do. It was like the way they explained it, it made so much sense. Man, that's my The only reason that. I don't like it is because I don't believe that Yo's the one. <laughs> well, now that's a whole other conversation there now. You just can't just drop that and walk off the mic. Like, Neo, not the okay. one. Well, I always thought the discussion okay. was that he was not the one, but he was one of many that come through the line. Right, I can see that. that. And also, if you think about it, what the Oracle said about how to reset the Matrix, mm -hmm. I followed after watching the movie a couple of times and really so fast. I thought that the what's his name, Agent Smith, was the one. Oh, that's a mm -hmm. mind bender. Go, 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 go to YouTube. Go to YouTube and look up who's the real one from the Matrix, or who's the real one of the Matrix. And they explain, and everything lines up so perfectly to where I had to believe that. Huh. Okay. I'll pull this you up. You know what? I cannot even... Right. Because, I mean, it would make sense because his oh, ability to... He was already on... In, he was already inside the Matrix. Right. And then he gained he the ability. in the Matrix? Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, def I definitely bookmarked that mug. So yeah, I have to. I have to definitely. Yeah. So, with you saying that, that actually kind of <laughs> that brought me to another piece that I was I wanted to bring up about actually what you all was mentioned earlier. So, have y'all? Do y'all know who Long Beach Griffey is? Heard of him? Heard of him? Yeah, I've seen a couple of videos. I don't think I have. He, he's, I'm have to I think up. he's a pretty okay, funny guy. And then I saw this. Now, I firmly believe love who you want. Completely okay with that, right? Great. Yeah. You're enjoying life. Yeah. Then this comes um, up. I know who he is. Wow. As the second yes. image. Oh boy, uh, that's a hot mess. Uh, and then after that, let's uh, wait, 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 Come on. wait, 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 I just read what it said. Yeah, yeah, that's let me go back. That's one, white love, okay, right, right. That's I'm not that's really too mad at you. Straight this, two. One. this one, this one right here, followed by. This one. Found my white printer. Oh mm. shit. Mm. Mm, that is a. Mm. Hope he has another job wound up somewhere. <clears throat> now again. I feel like. I right, let you finish. Now go ahead. I feel like when it comes to stuff like that, like it's better to keep your mouth closed. If you if you're yeah. gonna get outside your race, more power to you. Like you love who you love. You got people who are gonna stick to that race to the wheels fall off. You got people who are adventurous. You got people who basically just a kink to them. Like it's hmm. it's so much to that. And then the fact that you broadcasting like it means you don't give a rat's you know what about your race because you are black, sir. <laughs> I mean, if you couldn't tell, mama's black. Mm. <laughs> you know, it ain't a show unless I I freeze out, bro. It, it just <laughs> it wouldn't time. be. You're right. It's true. Every time. <laughs> mm, can't use a comb, can't bring her home. At least that's what my mom always said. Wow. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Man. Man. <laughs> your mom said what? If she can't use your comb, don't bring her home. Oh wow. Why? What comb are you using? <laughs> now that's the funny part. Just for the beard. Just for the beard. I see you. I see you right. Nah, but I'm bald now, but I'm told this is like okay. this yeah, I had here. The only, only reason I brought it up was just like I said, like I said, I am I have dated across the spectrum. Like anyone who knows me knows that. I care less. If if you're beautiful, you're beautiful. Period point blank. Right. Inside, outside, the whole nine yards. The thing that. is though, when you and this is one conversation I've heard a lot of black women bring up too, is like the day you start dissing right. everyone else that's when i have the problem and i you know if it's not your thing that's cool if you don't want to talk to anybody else that's cool but 
Well, and what does that help right about now? why? Yeah, well, I'm like, what part does that help right now? Like with everything that's mm -hmm. going on, if you if we're talking about unity, right. we're talking about trying to get this back to some semblance of a reasonable society. Like, what what is the help in advertising that you're completely disparaging part of your own culture and heritage? Mm -hmm. See, I understand. It's like you know, you it's a lot of people want to talk about the whole pride thing, but at the same time, it's like you also have to look at the fact that you know it is you, you feel what you feel you really can't fight that part but to say something so negative and put it out in the space like you were going to get anything other than just some clout and some clack back like <laughs> come on he was just it, it's mm, that kind of stuff just trying to get some likes and some views or some hate and he don't need it, that's the sad thing but you don't need the clout no. a lot of folk yeah, he, he's pretty well known like, i don't know him by name but i can see his face i'm like oh yeah this is gonna be a funny video First thing pops right. in my head. Right. Legit, bro. And so, yeah. why? But, well, but him being a comedian also, so you, it's like you got to look at the trolling side of it too. Like trying to do that and trying to garner attention. It, you know, unfortunately, we've learned from hip hop and, and life in the past that, you know, the negative gets more attention than the positive. Like you can right. pass out turkeys all day long, but if, you, if you're not trying to burn something down, you're not getting any likes. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. that's kind of what it plays into. Mm -hmm. That's true. And so I, yeah, my question true. is, do you think that he did that just for that reason, in all honesty, I, I don't get it. Clout. Right, because even even the fact he did it, guess what? If both of if it don't matter whose job they get pulled over by the police, he's still getting questioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't care how famous you are, he's still gonna have to get out the car. Well, at some at some point, somebody's gonna, someone he's gonna have a kid. He's gonna he's gonna have to answer right. to hey, you know, I completely burnt your whole rest side of your family. You know, you're you happen to be mixed, but I completely disparaged everybody else that you came from. Right. You know. mm. Right. Right. Like I was messing with the wrong black girls. Oh, that too. That too. Like, Just the wrong let, girls in general. Uh-huh. They let one or two, three mess ups, mess up thing for the entire race. Like you gotta understand. It is no two people like I don't care if they twin, triple, quadruple, it's gonna be something different between every person on this earth. You yes. can't knock a whole race wanted, because you have some bad experiences. Even if you wanted to use it to be like, okay, well, she's been she's the best girl I've ever been with. She he could have said that without bringing race into it. You can't right. just be like, This right. is the best chick right. or whatever. Why you had to say she's better than the black girl? Mm. Is she not better than the other white girls that you dated? Because that right now that's that, now you're it's still a it's a measure. And right? not only that, he's a public figure putting that stigma on this girl too. Like I have to look at it mm -hmm. from the other side. It's like now she's got to answer for right. what white people doing? everywhere. <laughs> she might oh, be feeling like I'm happy. Yeah, yeah, she's having a great time. It's a great day. And her like, oh, so you think you're better than us? And she like, I didn't even say that. Right, <laughs> it wasn't Facts. me. She said like. <laughs> Is that whack ass comedian? You can tell right. him kick rocks. Yeah, uh -huh. man, that's, oh, that's yep, troubling. Man. That's crazy, man. I just don't understand. Like, I don't want to come off biased, but I just don't understand how anybody could not love the black woman, bro. Like, <laughs> they're just they're just beautiful. I mean, obviously there's ugly ones, but there's ugly people in every race. But like, right. that's true. That's true, bro. A, like, let's just. Think of Gabrielle Union, bro. That's hey, Lord, y'all really? trying to get me in trouble with my wife up in here. <laughs> <laughs> get me charges up in my house, man. I'm listen, just saying, though. listen. I'm gonna tell you a secret. As long as y'all don't say one name, I'm good. If y'all don't say the vocab, no name, y'all ain't say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. when, short story. Hey, when she got hey, get in trouble. Years ago, I cried. My wife. Was oh pissed. wow. <laughs> <laughs> she was oh, who was it? Okay, who was it? What's the name? What's the name? What's the name? Nah, I ain't gonna see you. Oh, come on. Hey, can we keep playing it now? Because I can't say her name, but we could take a long walk around the park. We're gonna say a hand come dark. right for the back of that head. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just I'm looking up for you. I'm looking over your shoulder, bro. I'm looking over your shoulder. It's cool. He just gave like you the me. biggest hand, bro. Like, oh, like oh, oh. ain't catching. He Let's said take he can a long walk, walk around yeah. the park. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, you got it. I'm not mad. You know what I mean? <laughs> not mad at you. Not mad at you. How could you? But, yeah. Be bad. 
Well, we, well, we know who doesn't have a whole path in their relationship. Ooh, I hate to say it like that. But, right. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm working on passes. Denied. <laughs> Everything's open to negotiation. He's like, until right. that. <laughs> mm. Forgot what movie it was, but ain't shit on. I forgot what movie. It was. Oh, two can play that game. Where I think I think it was Anthony Anderson's character said. FBI ain't got nothing on a woman with a plan. And she planning you ain't having no hall pass, and you ain't having no damn hall pass at that point. <laughs> oh man. man. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this one up here. Uh, we'll kind of switch gears a little bit. Y'all remember this kid? See if I where is it? Y'all kid. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is him today. Uh, his his actual name is, and I'm probably I may miss the pronunciation, so I apologize. Di Ernst Colin is his name. He goes by the nickname Killer Whale by his friends, though. Killer Whale. Uh, Killer Whale. The man is an O line, O lineman. They just won the uh, state con t- uh, competition, and Damn. I believe oh, Reese Dennis Dennis Collins. at East Orange in New Jersey. Okay. Uh, but he was—I was—I was looking it up, and he was I had a little article about him. And he was talking about how he felt after this happened, like being in that spotlight. Turned into he's, a, he got bullied a lot as a kid because of this image. Uh, he, they said he was about nine when that when that meme came out, and we all know we people use that meme today. Oh, like, you know what I mean? Still. Somebody probably used it yesterday, type deal. <laughs> so yeah, two days ago, you're right. Guilty. See, two days ago. I wouldn't go into that bathroom for 35, 45 minutes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but he was talking about how, like, people would really pick on him regarding that now, mm-hmm. like, how mm-hmm. he had to work through that. And one of the words he said, and this is just for anybody who has ever felt like they're being picked on, no matter what the reason he is, I think what he said could help somebody. So I wanted to bring it up. He said, I would say just don't take it so personal, especially in a situation like this. Because mm-hmm. when I did take it personal, I did get it to a place where it was like, I don't know if I want to go out anymore. He didn't want to go anywhere. Uh, and he also said, stay close to friends and family. Mm-hmm. And when you meet new people, they won't take it as personal. You know what I'm saying? Don't take it as personal when they say that. Um, mm-hmm. It's just, that's what they know. And right. he's like, once people got to know him for himself and his, right. you know, say his actual name, then it was a whole different scenario. But yeah, they're, uh, he was all conference this year. So I wanted to give him a shout out yeah, on the no show doubt. just because my you, boy didn't glowed all the way up. He doing his thing, and the name Killer Will is freaking awesome. I'm not gonna. Yeah, lie. That's a dope. First of all, if you know about Killer Will, like, yeah, eat him alive, bro. That's praise, bro. Uh-huh. Like yo, <laughs> right. yo, 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 he said, "How much you made, bro? Made you Killer Will, bro? Like, that, yeah, uh, he, he earned that. You yeah, know he earned he, that, man. You he earned just that one. You know, that, that, that is an NFL that poster all day. day. You, you gonna push people right. on their back? <laughs> Right, Man. he was you running boys. You don't just get killer wheel, you gotta earn that. Mm. <laughs> right, <laughs> hey, back. how's it going? How's it going? Yeah, Kono, we appreciate you. He said, They said, How much, here, hold up. How much do you bench, bro? Because, yeah, that's what you asked that man. How much do you bench? Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of them stuff. conversations. Yeah, I said about 250. I got 250. Mm. He Look, minimum, Easy. he's Easy. repping two, he's repping 250. <laughs> Easy 250. Well, especially Shoot. like to to go from like that dark place to something so positive and really yeah. be knocking it out, man. That that takes a lot. That takes a lot of work, a lot of work. So for those who are going through a time, whatever that time is, there is a way out of things. You mm. Just keep keep focusing on whatever your dream is, whatever you're passionate about. Put that focus, that time, that energy in, like we always say, and you will get there. That light at the end of the tunnel, or however you want to describe it for yourself, but you will get there. So that was a, a thing that I thought was a, a very nice, a nice little piece. So, yeah, a little yeah. fun filler. Positivity. Positivity. Yeah. Positivity. It's always good for some positivity. Always, always. Now, I was, I'm, and I apologize, y'all. I still can't get the audio for videos to come through. Um, I was mm-hmm. going to show the Sonic 2 trailer. Because oh. it did finally drop. Oh man, yeah, that looks dope. I can I can play it, but it won't have any audio, so I feel like it won't make any you know difference. So I won't I won't do that to us because I'm gonna be mad for y'all. 
Because you got to hear this. Yeah. Go watch it. Got to. You got to go watch the trailer, though, because this is a problem. Right. I was, well, like, I was supposed to be April to this trailer. April I'm 8th, <laughs> See, that's a, I, I, that was probably one of the highlights that came out of the 2020 like pandemic streaming movie situation, like being able to get to enjoy that movie. Like it was actually really good, and I'm looking mm-hmm. forward to the second one. I was I was surprised how well it turned out. Even got nominated for a couple of awards and stuff. I was like, yep. all right, Jim Carrey yep. is a goat. Mm-hmm. Jim Carrey is definitely. Oh yeah, Jim Carrey is oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. That was that's a great that's that's for him. movie. Let's, let's not forget we kind of bullied the whole company about how signing up. Oh I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, garbage. They, 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 we had to. I could. They the had to. Only time that I go with bullying. You bully when it comes to something like that. Don't mess up our childhood. Yeah, no, like, that like one is that obvious. Thing. That just shows you they could have did that in the first place. Yeah. That just, that just shows they could have did that in the first place. Sonic looked like show me the way. Okay, he did. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna what he looked like. He he looked like he looked like the son that should have been paired with the Uganda Knuckles. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Show yep. me do it. Like that's what he looked like. He was Show he was he was, he was matched at man. Like Uganda no, knuckles. y'all not doing not that to us. Uganda Muppets. So <laughs> I have something that I want. Since we're talking about movie releases, as y'all know, next year we're getting is it next year after next we're getting into the Spider Verse too. Oh right. yeah, it looks good. Oh yeah, mm. yeah it's looking great. So, you all know there will always be a DC versus Marvel thing, no matter what. Yeah, of course. On the same day as we get Spider Man into the verse two, we they be dropping. I think it's called Super Pets following Crypto and the Battle. <laughs> oh, wow. You still can't day. get this right. Yeah, come on, come on, you <laughs> Don't mind me laughing. That's Wait, just <laughs> listen. I'm, the movie, So I've seen snips. Movies look good. So, mind you, TikTok, I, I live by TikTok. The guy posted a video about it on TikTok. He is a huge DC fan. And the first thing he said, what the fuck are y'all thinking? Why would y'all do this to y'all sales? <laughs> like, I love DC, but do you actually think I'm going to pay to go watch this before I see Spider-Man? <laughs> Oh my Great. gosh, no. You mm. can't write this. You could have put, put Shazam, something, Suicide Squad, something. I, you are, I, I, honestly, something. They, they have fumbled the football at every possible turn as with the DC franchise. Like, there have been some incredible DC franchises that have run really well and they've looked great. And But unfortunately, when they try to do that, that the universe and everything else, they ruined it and they keep like fumbling. They write it too serious and too dark and too, ah, man, they just don't capture the right thing. And then it's always the timing. They were trying to release against Marvel. It's like, no, you should just stagger it and say the hell out of Marvel's way. Right. And then and develop the stories. Like, why the hell can't you get a story right? Shazam was the closest one. And maybe the first Wonder Woman was was pretty damn tight, it, even though it was just a rehash of Captain America, uh, the original Captain America right. back in right. World War Two. But it was still a good movie. It, it was good, you know placement and timing for it through you know even for women and and all those things all those things are extremely positive they just the writing is always terrible it's way like even the the re-release on hbo uh what was that the justice league re-release yeah the snyder 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 like even it was still really ham-fisted like they just try to jam too many executives ideas into a bag and pull out whatever the hell was going to work to get Uh, the next plot point so i mean I, i digress but I mean, seriously, they're going to release Wonder Pets like 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 Nickelodeon's Wonder Pets on the same damn day and expect any kind of result. So my real question is this: Are they going to release that mashup game at the same time too? They got to. Uh, they're going to have to. The oh, Suicide Squad, brother. <laughs> listen, but, but, DC, I give you. Yeah. I, I'll give you guys an excellent example of DC. I don't know if y'all saw this, but y'all know the Rock's filming Black Adam right now. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is DC stupidity in a nutshell. How the costume is that it had padded costume for The Rock? And what, what? multiverse of The Rock need a padded superhero costume? Why does he costume? need pads? Have you seen that man working out on Instagram every day? I'm that ashamed is- to be his skin tone and not, not have... Have like, they not watched like, Michael Rashford have any ever? <laughs> yeah. If there's one person that does not need any padded superhero outfit, it is Dwayne Watt Johnson. That is his stupidity in a nutshell. That is his buff in his sleep. Right. (laughs) His eyebrows are doing like weightlifting. 
How much did your eyebrows take? <laughs> For real. That's crazy. Like that's yo. their just that's their stupidity in a nutshell. I oh. read that the other day. I'm like, are you serious? Like. How much Thank coke God. do you need to do off the desk? How much cocaine do you need to do oh, off the and, desk <laughs> before the ideas are that terrible? The, there was a couple of lines. There was at, a couple of lines eight. at least. Hey, oh my gosh, yeah, that's an eight ball. That's an eight ball. Yeah. That's probably a whole day. Like Alaska with cocaine <laughs> doing that. Oh my right. gosh, just <laughs> like, I, I heard. I heard that. I'm like, you know what? God bless the rock. We want to do Black Adam, but man, I, it, I don't I'm know. A, I would say this: when it comes to DC. I'm going to tell you where they dropped the ball at. Mm. After the Dark Knights. The Dark Knights yep. were the best DC movie, period. Robin Hood should have come next, for the That's record. Right. That's my vote. I'm, I'm with you. Now. Okay. So, with that being said, the DC, we're going we're gonna to separate because it's two different DCs. You got the DC, mm -hmm. then you got the TV shows. Right. Mm -hmm. When it comes to TV shows doing their crossovers, Oh, oh my yeah. god, they the Slash and Green yeah. Arrow and the um, Arrowverse is amazing. Like, the shows are not, you know, up to par, but I would prefer if they use that in their movies than what they're doing. That's yeah. what a because lot of people Because on saying. Earth was amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. DC got yeah. a lot going for them, bro. They just can't make movies, bro. If they take they their can't. TV shows, if they took their, their actors from the TV shows, and made a movie based on those franchises, they it's would be right. they would make bank. Oh, it's yeah, right, yeah, easy. They just can't get it because, like, when amazing. I saw the flash, flash in Justice League versus the Barry Allen in the show, mm -hmm. I like the CW Flash, yeah, way better. Thank awesome. you. A huge fan of it got me into and it, he and sing. yeah, and he can sing. Exactly. <laughs> he can, that's right. he can. Hey, we have standards, entertainment value, damn it. <laughs> you, right? you gotta be well rounded around these parts. That's sure. right. I mean, at least the CW flash can run. I mean, guess the same thing that about the too? Oh like, my gosh, man. That the that like dude, the song like, that you he never saw. played a sport in your life, did you? Like his yeah. his arms be wailing and flailing around. I'm like, <laughs> what are you swimming through molasses? Oh what, my like, gosh. what happened? <laughs> I'm glad him do the Naruto on or something. Shit. Oh. <laughs> Let's no, put him in front of another green screen. like that, bro. I mean, it might as well. So you gonna let like, him run? I I know Naruto runs good. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying you could have did something. Yeah, they could have gave him that and been better. That's true, oh, though. Man. That is well, and it also shows so much inconsistency because now you have this entire plate of characters uh, that you completely ignore in a TV universe, and then you mm -hmm. want to come over here and try to do something important. At least in the uh, the Marvel side of things, they have a tendency to try to incorporate all that stuff. You might see somebody pop up from one of the other TV shows on one of the movies as a walk-on right. or something like that. And it, it gives a little bit of that continuity of the universe. It's just, DC, it, it's it's such a, a shame, like everybody's saying. Like, right. Superman's a great character. Fish out of water. Uh, I don't know if you saw the documentary right. about Tim Burton possibly Cap. doing the Superman movie. Uh, no, I didn't see that. Uh, yeah. it, the documentary is really good, and the Superman movie would have been tight. Like the the perspective, this fish out of water alien on a fo foreign planet kind of thing was amazing. The concept would have been great. I don't know about Nicolas Cage as Superman, but I would have given it a shot. The difference is though, you know, yeah. instead of digging into it, like the Christopher Nolan stuff was awesome. Th that the whole series of the Dark Knight trilogy was amazing. It ended with uh, uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt, you know. Why didn't you pick up with the Robin story? Why didn't you move on with the, you know the, the right. thing that the people were paying money and interested in? Now nah, we're gonna you know, okay. Ben Affleck's gonna be the new Batman. Well, I, I'm out. Like I don't see Ben Affleck as Batman. He was terrible as Daredevil. He could he can kick rocks, <laughs> but he wasn't bad in the movies. In fact, he was one of the highlights in the movies. Everybody else was bad. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so I mean, I, I'm gonna say this, and people are mad at me every time I do. <laughs> I really don't care. I'll die on this hill. Henry Cavill should never have been Superman. He should have mm -hmm. been Batman. Mm. Yep. Who? I would have. I would have. I would have taken that. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. If okay. you've seen The Witcher, yes, you've seen The Witcher. He should have been Batman. Where the hell is Period. that actor? Right. And he's gonna be up here on for season three. <laughs> Just side note: they are taking Henry Cavill out for season three. They're talking about okay. The Witcher. Uh, man. They're talking about replacing him. I'm like, are you serious? I mean, he's Superman. So yeah, there's that. But yeah. Okay, I found the TikTok, and the name of the um the pit movie is called The Legend of Super Fits. I mean, the League of Super Fits. My bad. League? I just sent it to the group. No. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry, sir. 
A because it, it came on as an ad on, on a YouTube video I was watching. Yeah. And I was like, really? You this got crypto bad. Kevin Hart is in the movie. <sighs> oh, boy. Speaking of Kevin Hart and movies, <laughs> y'all know Borderlands, right? Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Y'all know he's supposed to be playing Roland, right? What? I didn't hear this. Yes, I, Kevin Hart have... is Roland. No, I from the original that. Borderlands. Oh. I, I love Facial Kevin Hart, Hart, man. Right. I'm but I don't know. I'm curious. I'm, <laughs> gonna, I'm not gonna put it past it. Quick, Kevin Hart's talent. Yeah, I just cool. think he's at that point where he's oversaturated. Everybody, everything yeah. you see is Kevin Hart. Everything, bro. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. It's just. You, I think it was what three years like we got Kevin Hart in the Rock movies. Three yeah. Oh movies. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Back, 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 back. Back. They're out of ideas. Or Ice Cube. Yeah. Like, it was Kevin Hart, Ice Cube, Kevin Hart, and Rock, and then don't Kevin get Hart. Hart. That was a good movie. Though. Yeah, it was a great movie. <laughs> I like Kevin Hart. Yeah. I like yeah. I like that was Hart. stupid, but it worked. Oh, Will, Will Ferrell. Ferrell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, it's Jim Carrey, Adam Sandler, Will Ferrell. That's my list when it comes to them. Love. Really? You know, you know For what? Like speaking movies, of movies, 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 I'm watching every day. You know what? <laughs> are we talking about like just comedy movies? Or are we talking about comedy in general? I'm talking about the, 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 the characters that they portrayed in all the movies. Okay. Right, right. All right. Like, Dan, you ain't Jim got Carrey, no black comedian. Adam Sandler. <laughs> Huh? Nah, I got a Jim Carrey. Hey, you, you talk about movies though. Like, yeah, so I get yeah, it. Yeah, movie so actor. Like, com- when actor you said it, I was like, deal. bro, your top three is all white? We got some like I was talking about. But you're talking about movies. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, talking about movies. Nah, I got a Jim Carrey hot take. I just thought of something. I just had I can, a, I just I had can, a thought. I can get behind that. I can get behind that. Because first of all, <laughs> Bill Ferrell is ridiculous. And Adam Sandler, when it comes to these kind of movies, is the GOAT, bro. Right. The originator. Right. So, he an OG. He an OG with that. He an OG. You don't even got to say nothing about Jim Carrey because we already gave him it. Right. That's a given. Yeah. Right. So The only person I would add to that. And rest in peace is Robin Williams. Oh yeah, most that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that was hey, our whole childhood he, right there. Yeah. Oh. He's S tier, like he don't he don't yeah, he's S- S- on list, bro. He do not get put on list, bro. He no Mrs. Yeah. Doubtfire, no, like, G. come on, yeah. man, just a man hey. in fat in in Mrs. Doubtfire, shit. Yeah, well, no, I got a I got a crazy I point though. He was the first. Uh, I, I, we we were talking about this off air. Uh, we were discussing like uh, Wayne Brady, but like it, it's difficult for unfortunately black comedians to be able to kind of let themselves go to that goofy place, though. Like to right. play the characters because there's a lot of like you're gonna try to put a black man in a dress in every movie. Come on, we gotta we gotta try to do a little bit better than that. But every for there to be some great actors that could take that tier of like a Will Ferrell or something like that, where they get yeah. to play goofy black entertaining, engaging people that it's not a stereotype or, or something unfortunate, you know? Right, because we have goofy people. Hell yeah, we right. do. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, if you you guys probably seen Jumanji. If you, any of y'all got kids, you saw the Jumanji oh, yeah. movie. It's a, it's a pretty funny movie, and it has, like, you know, I would say The Rock and Kevin Hart were definitely slapstick oh, worthy in that movie. <laughs> yeah, in that one, yeah. yeah. I, like, I will honestly say they did Robin Williams justice. They when did. They redid Jumanji. Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. Oh yeah. I was hoping that they. I was like, please don't screw this up because that was gonna be. Right. And they yeah. still put their own spin to it. Exactly. So it was nice. It was nice. They modernized it, it, brought it into video it games. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though the video game was old as me. So. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey. Mm-hmm. And it worked. <laughs> it worked. It, it worked. Right. It was good. Shoot, we all got those consoles in the back of the closet. That got some dust in right. them. You got to blow them out with some air canisters. I brought out the, 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 the Genesis the other day. Yeah, yeah. Fire. Oh, you, oh, I'm jealous. I think that was episode three. That was yeah, I got it. Right. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, it, you, you brought it yeah. on, on, on the screen. Oh, so did y'all hear? Um, I, I can't remember his name, but the guy who made the NES and this the Super NES. I was just gonna talk about that. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. dang. Yeah. His name was uh. Ooh, look, at the look, 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 look at the Yamura. city right here. He was right, the lead at, architect look at, look at, look at for the Super Nintendo. Segway. It's a flow. <laughs> Segway right into it without even knowing. He didn't even know <laughs> y'all. That's <laughs> Ultra Instinct. Or is it Ultra Ego? Yeah. Ultra Ego, you know. Yeah. Hey, we need the Ultra Ego button for when we do that. <laughs> right. I got you. I'll find it. I'll find it. <laughs> like, Yo, y'all should check out that, that YouTube. Have to deal with later on you hit the button. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't post like an Ultra Instinct versus Ultra Ego in the in our group chat earlier. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. 
I was like, wow. I, I only reason I haven't watched it, I ain't that far in the um, manga yet. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. No. But yeah, he um he passed on the sixth at seventy eight years old. Uh, man. But he was right the on architect top, for the Super Nintendo right. and the Nintendo. We well, owe him. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. Oh yeah. And we appreciate his hard work. Chance, um yeah. on we do. Kotaku.com. Mm. They have mm-hmm. a interview with him from last year uh that they did he did about him coming to uh took the creation of Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. And I guess his boss would always call him when he was drunk and be like, yo, you should do this idea, blah, blah, blah. He was like, all right, boss, whatever. And then hung up on him, right? And the next morning, his boss was like, no, but for real, though, remember I was telling you about that last night? I'm going to need you to work on that. He was like, oh. <laughs> oh, that was for All real. right. <laughs> I was just playing. Right. <laughs> and that's how Super Nintendo came to uh, came to play. Also, just so you know, it was called Famicom. Excuse me, Famicom first. F-A-M-I-C-O-N. Famicom. Famicom. Right, you got that new Famicom fam? Yeah. Oh. Right next to my Air Force Ones. You You like Those this band aid under my eye? Right. Right. <laughs> Those are that days. was that time frame. Too. Oh my gosh, man. That was that time frame. Also, uh, I know y'all know about this. Uh Cowboy Bebop being canceled. Yeah. What are y'all thoughts on Thought that? I- Saw it coming. It they already coming. canceled it? Already. already. Yeah, they already canceled it. One season. I saw that coming. I saw that oh, coming. Man. It wasn't even one season. Like, they canceled it while the season was still going. Yeah, yes. they canceled They're like, there's no more after they're, they're going to cut it. It yeah. looked like a cool concept. Did it, like, was it terrible? Did it not pan out? I don't think it was that bad. So it was not as bad. Maybe I watched more, but the first episode wasn't that bad. Yeah. I mean, it couldn't have been that bad if he I mean, number one. Comparing it to, to nah, how the reason why I hit number one reality joints, I think it was all right. You know, it could have been why I hit number one is because it was Cowboy Bebop flat For out. Sure. Oh, yeah. Everybody wanted to give it a chance. That's mm-hmm. why it hit number one. I mean, because Cowboy Bebop, bro, it's, it's right. classic. That's exactly. But the fact that they diverged from the actual storyline oh, and tried to do man. like some background stuff, I heard it was decent. And again, I didn't watch it. I, have not, right. I was like, I'm not gonna I haven't seen it. I watched the whole thing. Yeah. So I wasn't going to. I have it. a question. I'm not even going to lie. Yeah, I should be giving remakes up. versus reboots. Yeah. Remakes Ooh. versus reboots. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Good. I probably know where I'm going. That's busy what it is. Yeah. As y'all know. They rebooted Summon King. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about one of my favorite anime. We my favorite anime. No, I'm in the second part of it, and I'm like thoroughly pissed. Because I know they have a black character in Summon King. Yeah. When I say this episode is probably the racist episode I've seen the anime in a while. Is it? Wow. Is it? When, we say, when we say this man was thoroughly pissed, I'm talking about. He watched the episode and called me immediately, like, "Yo, vocab, I just, I just need to rant to you for a little bit." Bro. I was like, I oh, shit. I was... "What happened? So, how bad was it?" Okay, first, well, I'll tell you how bad it was. They basically redid the whole story of Shaman King. It still got you know trying to be the Shaman King and the characters, voice actors changed. That kind of hurt, but like, I, I like, okay, I'm trying to get into the story. I like how they doing it. Look different. Mm-hmm. When they finally got Joko and they did his backstory, they made it like he was basically Joko was a redeemed killer. His parents got killed, so he had a Batman in it, and he would kill people just because. Like he was a gang member. Mm-hmm. And his gang was upset because he met a shaman and someone was trying to teach him how to be a shaman. And they killed his teacher to get him to be back to his old way. And I'm okay. like, so this man is a redeemed killer now in the anime. When in the original, he's just a comedian. And his shaman, king, his shaman teacher was a comedian, wanted to be the best comedian and cure the world with laughter. Right. Same premise, but did y'all have to add killing in and the gang and all that? Um, hey, it's, it oh, it's, that's kind of messed up. Yeah. That's yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, let's take one black character and put him in a gang. Like, come on. Bro. 
Uh, which goes like back to what we were talking about earlier. Someone. The Shaman so, Crips, nigga? That's what we do? Shaman Crips? The Shaman Crips. <laughs> I don't know, but we're in right. a... Uh, shaman Comedy in... Crips. <clears throat> right. That might be funny. That might be... <laughs> 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 like, let me get the pitch. Let me get the pitch. Well, where, where is uh, the remake coming out of? Is it actually coming out of is the original series? It's, oh, it's on Netflix. Netflix. Like, yeah. what country yeah. was it from? Japan. Uh, it's it was the original, so I wonder if oh, they, they actually got it directly from Japan. Let me see. I have no I idea. I they feel probably like bought the stream. They like probably bought the streaming rights. Yeah, because yeah, they they got the Netflix original logo on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do the same thing with um Pokemon with um the Pokemon anime because Netflix got that. It's Pokemon original. Yeah, but for them to release it on Netflix with such a glaring, you know, negative connotation for black people that wasn't in the original story, that sounds. A, like a lot, they might need to really address that issue. Well, I'm gonna yeah. say this: it, it's like a quick, it's like a quick five minute episode when we because they okay, the the reboot is the anime, but a little faster with a lot of different changes. Mm-hmm. Powers are the same, the storyline's different because y'all know the original storyline. Uh, Ren, was it Ren was fighting his uncle that was trying to take over the family. Right. And the in the up, I mean the boot reboot, it's his dad. That was something that kind of irked me because in the original line and the manga, it was his uncle. And right. his uncle didn't his uncle his dad was like Mufasa and Sar basically. But now they just got rid of the whole uncle story and made it his dad. Yeah, it and just says that other thing. He just throws it. Yeah. And they changed the little guy and the little guy's name was Morty. Not something else. I can't even remember. Yeah, they did. That's probably because of Rick and Morty, though. Oh, that's possible. So, I mean, even though it was there before that, mm-hmm. but I can see people. They, they came before. Yeah. It might have been for recognition purposes, especially if Netflix got their hands on it. They don't want anything that's going to conflict yeah, with another brand or IP, flash. probably. Yeah. 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 Forget the flavor. They, they, they fucking up. Especially if it's, they're going to replace a, a racist stereotype into a, right. uh, it never was there before. Like, what kind of crap is that? Right. Makes you wonder about One Piece, but mm, I'm not going there yet. I'm not going there. Yet. <laughs> Don't go there. I'm just trolling. I'm just. I'm just messing with you. I y'all. know you were. Darn it. <laughs> All right. So I want to bring this up because actually, what you're talking about the whole. Actually, Nick brought it up first when he was talking about, you know, the Wayne Brady situation and, you know, black characters and stuff not being open, just being having that having that avenue to be open without being judged or not get the views that they should get in general. And then you bring it up the whole piece about, um, you know, the, them changing the the gang scene and, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying in Sean McCain and, and giving that negative connotation. So I want to bring something a little bit positive to the screen. I ran across this. And for you all that are in the area, let me know. This is in Stonecrest, Georgia. Yes. Down the <laughs> Did you get a light Bro. bulb? <laughs> Bro, okay. I'm going to show y'all something real quick. I am 6'1", right? Okay. I stand up. Oh, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just, just for references. But, um, yes, yes, we are going. Next weekend, we are going. I was okay. so happy when my friend showed me that. So this is the new Black Wall Street. Uh, from what it is, it is a there's about a hundred different stores inside of this place. Um, here, let me pull up the. Let me see if I can pull up the pictures. Hold up. Support Black business. It's really yes. what it is. It's a great concept. Um, Good it's idea. Like one big mega mall of all black owned businesses. It's so amazing. Is what it is. Let me see here. I'm like so come excited on, to go. On. Like y'all don't understand. I, when I saw that, I saw my wife and like we gotta go and drop a band. I'm yeah. not gonna drop just a to band. stop. <laughs> just to stop <laughs> in and support, yeah. Just to yeah, yeah. like uh Luke would probably lit, I would imagine. Oh my god, it is a restaurant and oh, yeah, well, damn, we're bro. talking about. I want to go to. I forgot the name of it. When I find it, I will send y'all to TikTok. But yes, I want to go. Anyway, but they also have an online fact, store as well with it. Oh, yes. So you, you know, what I'm saying you can be a online promoter 
of business or something like that, and it can still oh, be yeah. affiliated with it. See, I've been hoping to see more of this pop up too, especially as you know, like you've got Simon Malls and stuff pulling out right. a lot of major cities. Like yeah. it's cheap pickings to pick up that real estate because ain't nobody else going to develop it. That's right. You exactly. know, why not just fill it with you know multicultural spaces and stuff? I've seen there's uh, one over here uh, on the east side of Indy called uh, Washington Square Mall was yeah, bought yeah, out. Yeah. A what couple are they years. doing with that now? It's it's still more like a swap meet, unfortunately. They, they, okay. they really need to clean it up, but um, okay. they they're starting the process of it being an owned and operated by people uh, you know, people of color. I think it was uh, a Hispanic and a black um, like venture. There's a couple of of each that are working as far as the uh, actual investment and development of the of the site. So I'm really hoping okay. something comes from it. So, but that definitely looks awesome. Yeah. I mean, stop by Georgia. Yeah, come yeah. down. So if you're in that area, definitely go by. I forget where it was. I I saw some pictures of some stuff the last time I went through here. Maybe it was this dude's thing here. I don't know. Well, he's doing that. They they have had a slight negative um opening with you know colonizers being us to talk about we can't shop there. Nobody said that y'all can shop there. Well, it's also uh -huh. an understanding that you're supporting the community, though. Like, yeah, that's I think right. what makes a lot of people uncomfortable, which is stupid. So, yeah, yeah. so like they they try to some uh lady went like she lived went out her way to try to say something like they said I couldn't stop here, and nobody said nothing to the lady. She walked in and walked right out. Cloud like, chaser, you really went right? Out, yeah, like really went out your way. Cloud but chasing Karen. I'm going there. If y'all okay. want, I will record it. Please go, do. I, I go live on my Twitch or something. Yeah, please do. We, if we nothing else, going. and you just want to bring them, bring it with you, because you can screen share, uh, like your stuff, or you can send it or shoot it to me, and I'll pull it up. You know what I mean? And we can post yes. it on here. But yeah, you're that's your homework. Then you gonna give you're giving the report next week. Thanks. I got you. Bet right on. And for those who don't know. Black Wall Street was a thing. Um, so I want you to go look that up. Uh, it was in Oklahoma. This is kind of the time frames Wall and Street. stuff. And I, let me pull it back up here. There we go. Full screen. There you go. 1830, 1906. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the largest massacres that ever happened on U.S. soil. They Not the largest, the on us, bro. but one. Yep. They dropped a bomb. On they bomb. The entire area, um, like that Pearl was Harbor like, have as many casualties as all of them. Black Wall Street. Yeah. So well, it's also even in the surrounding research, areas, yeah. Because it is not in the regular history books. Nope. Why? Because they bombed it on uh -huh. U.S. soil. Uh, so. If you really want to see a crazy documentary about what they were uncovering and stuff, I think MSNBC ran it a couple of months ago uh, about what they were trying to do with it essentially they basically tried to um, build over the top of all of it and cover yeah. it up uh -huh. it was absolutely terrible to see yeah but it's not uncommon it happened all over the country too there was a was it amber ruffin or somebody had it on their show like the multiple places that actually happened where they like uh somebody or in one area that completely opened up a dam that wiped out an entire community and flooded it. It's still underwater to this day. Yep. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. And then there's also even the history of central park, which is part of that about whole to say thing that. too. Yeah. Yep. I was just about to say that. It's some stuff, so yeah, man. For y'all that don't know, it's also on uh, Lake Lanier, Georgia. Yep. Yep. Oh, I just heard about that. I saw TikTok about that. I was like, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, oh no, we should be we shouldn't be angry or you know resentful about you know how this whole thing's ever been handled or you know the fact it's never been addressed or taught in classes. Taught you know, we're gonna all. yeah, we're gonna keep calling it uh, critical race theory and right. uh, sweeping it in under the rug because it makes white people uncomfortable. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we about done with all that. Yep. We about done with all that. So we will be talking about that because come February. It'll be before that, but come February, yeah, we got some oh. lineups for y'all. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're not waiting for February, but definitely in February. Pieces, boy, we squaring up. We're <laughs> pulling up. I'll be telling my mom, I'm, I'm not. Hitting with the Migos. That's, that's my favorite song. Hitting with the right. 
oh, y'all got some pieces coming, bro. <laughs> yeah. A lot so. of colonizers are going to be mad at the words that come on my mouth. Uh-oh. So we will be having those conversations here as time goes on. Definitely we'll have some more uh some more guests as well. Mr. Ramey will definitely be back at, with at anytime he's free. He'll be oh, he'll yeah. be able to jump in on these as well. Um and actually I want to take that and go ahead since we're already in a serious serious mindset. Let's go ahead and jump into the main topic of the day. It's Tom. Serious and that's face. toxic masculinity. It's Tom. Okay. Now I'm gonna, y'all know me, y'all know I'm stupid. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this from a different angle. Let's get it. Okay. I want to talk about what it is first and where we feel it comes from. How do we feel it came about? But then I want to ask: Do you think that it's needed? Do you think it needs to be completely removed? And then also. I guess the biggest thing is why does it why does it exist in the first place? Mm. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do some definitions like we always do with anything. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna throw definitions out first. Right. Of course, of course. The definition right. of the word toxic is anything very harmful or unpleasant in a pervasive or insidious way. Insidious way. Something that's poisonous. Something that is completely detrimental to one's health in any manner whether it's mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, in any way, okay? That's it. <laughs> now, the next word is masculinity. masculinity. By definition, masculinity is any quality or attribute regarded as a characteristic of men. So when you say toxic masculinity, you're looking at characteristics of men that are very harmful or unpleasant in an insidious or poisonous way. Whether it be to themselves, those around them, the community at large. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, when you hear that term, because we all, we especially now, we hear it a lot. I'd like you all to go ahead and give me what I guess what triggers in you? What do you think? What do you feel? What is your response just to the word itself? Of the two words. Oh, everybody think I, I guess I'll go. Go ahead. Um, I am man. Hear me roar. Society <laughs> says I must assert my dominance because I am masculine. That's that's what toxic masculinity is. It's basically you not you not masculine because you're a man. Like you have to do extra things to try to say, yeah, look at me, I'm man. That's bullshit. Big facts. Yep, drink. Uh -huh. Yep, you know you gotta that's take it. a drink when you say some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's real. That's real. Accent. Now, Accent. Also, like that's basically what it is. It's like. Oh, because I'm a man, I need to like be alpha and I need to be dominant. And I mean, I'm not going to say there's not a such thing as alphas and betas and shit, but who made the concept that somebody had to be an alpha? And if you're not an alpha, then you're a beta. And you're this and you're like, but can I just be a man? Live my life? You know what I'm saying? Like, why do I need to assert that I'm a man? Now you brought up something that I also want to touch on at some point. We can dig deep if y'all want to. Y'all want me to put a pin in it? Let me know. We can dig uh, into that later on. Open, this, open Pandora's box, bro. Do it. <laughs> yeah, crank it. We are in pandemonium. We are in the wilds of pandemonium. This, this is, is where true. we at. This is where we at. It's literally so, so it's a big move. You gotta dig a little deeper. <laughs> yeah, let's go. I got the well, it's, it's a healthy space for it. Like exactly. Right. Right. So. When you you brought up that conversation about the alpha male, that whole premise mm -hmm. comes from humans following animals. Exactly. Alphas, sense. they came from the wolf pack mentality. That yep. whole lineup, alpha, beta, that came from the wolf pack mentality. Right. Because lions don't have alphas. 
you have the lead of the pack, <laughs> mm-hmm. the lead of the pride. He kicks every other male out. That's simple right. as that. That's it. There is no you alpha. Can't even be a male. Right. So, well, and then we also have to look at also from the other side of it. Well, okay, we have to look at like penguins. Let's look at penguins. Right. The the male carries around the babies. Yep. And protects them and stuff. It's like, okay, well, what truly then is the the definition of masculinity and and its role in society as opposed to the more toxic traits of it like you like you were saying the domineering and having to be the most dominant in every situation well and and also like on the whole it shouldn't be like the the masculinity that's the dominant part it can be a dominant personality it can be a the but the energy is what really makes a big difference about it and unfortunately, like you're talking to a brother who was called gay all through elementary and middle school because I was I'm a musician. Like my, my background, I was an opera singer. I was a, a, a vocal a training. Wait, well, I'm and, about, you sing opera? Oh, bro. I was with well, the Indianapolis Opera Company. Now, it don't oh, got to wow. be gay, but oh, we don't you, have you see this around here? This ain't just for show. This is all I real. Think, this saying. is real. <laughs> so, but like that's where it comes from. Like for me, like I... I, I saw it from both sides. I, I grew up on in the theater on the stage. I grew up around every possible type of people, every possible uh, conformation of people, the trans side, the heterosexual side, the homosexual side, like all of it. Like I got to see the diaspora of what we can possibly be if we just get over our bullshit. Right. And then at the same time, I also like I played sports and you get the toxic bullshit there. I was in the military yep. and I'm sorry, I was a, probably a part at some times of the toxic bullshit. Right, I mean, right. it's it's military life, you know, but unfortunately that's also survival. It's kind of like that that safe balance of trying to keep that energy up so you might get it through the next time. Now, uh, fortunately, you know, the integration of our military has really helped a lot of that, especially a lot of men on infantry lines that wouldn't be around women very often. They kind of have to temper that bullshit and yes. not act that way because you know this person has to watch your back you can't talk down to them and belittle them like they better be able to keep up that's all you got to worry about and that's the same thing with the trans in the military too it's like you're not really worried about what they're doing in their off-duty time you just want to make sure they can keep up with you and, and light it up so you're saying it's, too much it's it's crazy i know but like <laughs> I, i've seen it from both it. sides that's the thing like i really feel like and, I, and i've tried with my own son try to give him the balance. Like, you know, it starts out like, well, what color am I allowed to like? Like, you can like whatever the hell color you want. You're five years old. What re- what color do you like today? Right. Purple. Awesome. Purple it is. <laughs> That's the best color. Okay. I like that. Royalty, bro. Uh, it's up in my room right now. <laughs> it's legal. Me out in, in the extension of that, though, is like, how far do you also back off teaching what masculinity is? It's defending right. yourself and standing up for what you believe in. So there are the healthy side of it that we try to teach our children that we're trying to also clean up in ourselves because I'm a, I'm a fatherless son, my damn self raised by a mom. So masculinity was wh- wherever I saw it. So unfortunately, sometimes you get the wrong impression from television, get the wrong impression from movies, comic books, video games. And like I, I try my best to not put that on my kid. Like, you know, if it hurts, you can cry. It's okay. It's you know he's thirteen now, so you know, my boy's gonna make fun of me. <sighs> gotta get, oh, gotta yeah, get right, right. So, but peer at the pressure. same time, it's like peer pressure, peer pressure. But at the same time, it's like you don't have to be wrong to that girl. She's another person. You treat her like a human being, like you would want to be treated. And if you don't want somebody to do that to you, don't do it to somebody else. Very simple, golden rule: do unto oh, others as you would have do unto that yourself. One. So. I always had a problem with the, uh, unfortunately, it, it kind of pushed me away from uh, a lot of sports teams. Like I, I was the kicker for a football team, for my football team in high school because I played varsity soccer. Well, I was made fun of being the brown guy on the soccer team. You know, y- you catch that at an inner city school, no matter what. It's like, I can't like anything I'm allowed to like because not only do I also have to conform to masculinity rules and I'm in the theater, I also have to deal with race issues on the other side of it all. So do we want to keep stacking this on the next generation? Do we want to keep all this baggage to keep per- perpetuating like we all lived with this we were all smacked around by parents be, be you know don't don't cry don't do this don't it's like at, let's try something a little different i'm really hoping the black community really does embrace some of some of those uh things as well because unfortunately we're a generation of men raised by women unfortunately our our fathers and uncles and brothers and everything been locked up shot at like everybody's had to live in fear you know, let's try a, a, something different with the next generation. Let's embrace some of the things that make us human and frail, but that is also our strength. You know, and not to be on my soapbox. I apologize for stepping on anybody, but like, no. I just, 
I just want us to do better in this right. next generation. I, I see what our potential can be. I'm tired of the BS from Washington. I'm tired of the BS from the NFL and all this other stuff. Like, I just, I want us to kind of evolve. I feel like it's time we get the hell past this and evolve. <laughs> I apologize for being the brown man in the room. Ain't, ain't no, ain't no apologies. Yeah. That's brown bear no talking. Ain't got no, ain't no apologies. <laughs> but yes, um, the first thing that resonated with me when I forgot who said it about the animal thing, um, the animal, animal versus the human race, where we're animals too. We mm -hmm. tend to, um, if you think think about it like this, the fact that we're animals too, but we put ourselves above animals because we're quote unquote more intellectual, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But just like the animals do, we have our things that we do. No matter what, we still we still pick leaders. Mm -hmm. If it's by blood or by democracy or whatever. Um, another thing is with toxic masculinity, always going to be the pros and the cons of that. Mm. No matter how you look at like there, there is a positive when it comes to toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. But the negative outweigh the positive. Is there though? Bye bye. Or is it, there okay. a, a positive um, with masculinity? The toxic is what makes it negative. Mm hmm. True. I say it like that. Appreciate you. There is positive. Right. There is positive masculinity. Yeah, like the. It is okay to cry. It is. That's one thing. That it's okay to cry. But I'm gonna tell you something about crying. You don't cry from everybody, regardless, because they're gonna see that as a weakness. They're gonna see that something they can use against you, no matter if it's your best friend or your enemy. Exactly. Like. It, it's okay to like what you like. Like he said about his son, like a purple. My my daughter, she likes green, and then two days later, she's green, blue. Now she's purple and pink. I'm like, my mama did that. Like purple, the best. Color. I feel like mm -hmm. I may be wrong when I say this, but I feel like millennials are a turning point of trying to fix that area of things that is wrong throughout the generations. Mm -hmm. Millennials and was that the Gen Z, right? I just like we're in that area. Movies. Did you know that? Huh. Just we barely, yep. Mm -hmm. It starts in the eighties. We're the OG millennials. We yeah. are yeah. the the beginning of the millennials. I did not know. I found out like last week that we are. Yeah, I'm like that. The ninety millennials. Are. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but um, is when it comes to think about it, toxic masculinity. Is it's like the the one thing that comes to my mind when I think about that is that to be a man is to hold in your emotions. Right. It's like to be a man, you can't have emotions or show emotions. Mm -hmm. But soon as soon as a man is not showing his emotions or you know, not showing that he don't care, it's something wrong with him. Right. We can't let it out. We keep it in, then we kind of let it out. It's something wrong with it. If we keep it in, it's something wrong with it. It's, it's a double edged sword. It is. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I saw a lot uh, in the military, um, especially, you know, you're dealing with tragedy, you know, you get the successes and the failures and you know, some of the unfortunate situations. That I, I, I honestly felt more comfortable crying in the military than I do, you know, in my general everyday life because, mm -hmm. unfortunately, part of that tragedy in the balance in in war and in combat is realizing the the finality of what it can be and that's that's a that's a that's a thing you kind of have to cross into that without any kind of embarrassment because you're going to feel what you're going to feel in that moment like if you watch your buddy go down and this is the person you just had lunch with in the chow hall earlier that day talking about your kids getting ready to go on leave yes. like man i cried i i in open and public and unfortunately in those it's it's a something sad that has to happen to bring that out but like i said i've especially that and share sharing my emotions uh one of the things that's really taught heavily with our mental health in the military is um it, feel it, opening yourself up to the people around you and and being a part of that community because unfortunately you uh, you know you you need those people those people are the people you have to rely on you know it's like a marriage you know you're you're in in a bond with these people that a lot of people can't really understand or you can't really explain it but to lose that energy and that bond, like it, it'll shake you to the core. And 
that's part of the whole thing is like being able to like in, in this kind of environment, getting to talk to you guys and, and stuff like that. Uh, I'm a brother that's been trapped in the house for two years. I've been taking care of my kids. I was on furlough from work. I get to, this is the first time I really get to talk to humans in this kind of setting in a long time. Right. So, you know, these kind of interactions are extremely important, especially for men. I think that's one of the things uh, I know Ray and I, or Panda and I talked about years and years ago was being able to, to talk openly with other people about what you're going through and being a part of that mix. But that's where, you know, like you said, the toxic part of it is, is trying to keep that stoicism and keeping it right. locked up inside when it, it'll eat away at you and it comes out in other unfortunate ways, which we see that mm -hmm. happen every day with mental health issues on the street. Mm -hmm. So thanks for the, the open forum for all you brothers and, and getting a, a chance to talk and, and have these conversations. Cause I think this is important yeah. for all of our community. No doubt, no doubt. And it's like you all, everything you all are saying is 100% why I felt like we need to go ahead and touch on this conversation. Um, not so much for us, but it helps us, the five of us here. You know what I mean? It, it's for us, but it was more so just to get it out there so other people can hear this conversation by individuals who have to deal with it on the daily basis. Hey. It's like, it's not just, and I think sometimes it gets misconstrued that Oh, it's only the people that it's being perpetrated towards that feel the after effects of toxic masculinity. You know what I mean? Or the negative effects of it. We as men feel the negative effects of it on the daily basis because one, we're always thinking, okay, was that a toxic thing that I just did? Mm -hmm. Was that, you know what I'm saying? If you do something, we all are human. We're going to do something bad. We're going to mess up. We're going to make a mistake. We're going to have an argument with somebody. We're going to snap off at somebody, you know, just general things. We got, we had a bad day. We got snippy. We snapped. Okay. Now. Well, wait, was that toxic masculinity? Was I, was I being toxic? Was I just upset? Like all those other things that we have to, those pinpricks, as I call them, that we have to deal with on a emotional and, and spiritual level. And then it's like, on top of that, it's like, wait a minute. Now I'm also a black male, <laughs> which adds its own level of toxicity. Yeah. Every culture has their own level of it within their culture. And it's like, okay, not only am I now not allowed to cry, but if I cry, y'all remember back in high school, you see somebody crying, they just get hit in the shoulder. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Nah, mm -hmm. my school wasn't like that. My school wasn't like that. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Round these parts. Yep. Yep. Definitely <laughs> definitely know that one. You know, mm -hmm. something like it was stuff true. like that. This is like, oh, uh, you being weak. Like like uh Nick was saying, I was I was also in theater. I did theater, but then I also wrestled, you know what I mean? Or mm -hmm. in other sense, it's like people will always want to, especially especially certain sports. You y'all brought up the NFL earlier, and that's a huge one. Yeah. That and basketball, I think, are two of the biggest perpetrators in sports of toxic masculinity. Oh, um, yeah. Be just because there's such a big hype to be what's quote unquote called manly. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, you're you have to you have to perform at a certain level. You have to act a certain way. You got to drink Bud Light. You got to right. You got to get it. You got to get it. I want to read that one. Nah, but exactly. I think I think it is the top the toxic masculinity is worse. I think honestly, is it? If I don't know if any of y'all went to all, all boys Catholic high schools growing up. Ooh, nah, 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 that's crazy. Nah, bro, that's that that. This is why I don't fuck with a lot of masculine things as it is a lot a lot of times. I mean, you brought up basketball. I mean, I went um, to St. Raymond's High School for boys in the Bronx. I mean, mm -hmm. it was a lot of. It was it was it was rough. I mean, the basketball players, people doing like homophobic stuff or touching people's butts and shit. It mm. was just not friendly. Like I wore a gym class. That was big. I was big and fat back then. So, I mean, I'm big and fat now, but um, I'm probably okay. I'm probably at my high school. Yeah, I'm probably at my high school weight now. I, I need to get back into shape. But that that's another topic for another day. But <laughs> but honestly, honestly, I hated high school. I mean, I, I really did. I mean, I got along with everybody, but it's just like I hated gym class. You always making yeah. fun of me being fat and shit. And I mean, I was smart. You know, I didn't take no shit. I didn't fight anybody or anything. But it was just like, you know, just like people like, and even you say something even 
semi homophobic. I'm from this is like late nineties New York. So I mean, oh yeah, shit. really? That's yeah. what it was. Pre gentrification Times like, Square. The only difference was I was in Brooklyn instead of the Bronx. Like um, I, I was in the Bronx. Yeah, Bronx was bad. I mean, Bronx. Bronx is always bad, but yeah. that that particular era, man. Like, I mean, I graduated eighth grade in ninety eight. I got out. Mm-hmm. My my high school class was the first high school class to graduate after nine eleven. So that's just, I'm, I'm I'm showing my age right now. I'm definitely showing my age. But yeah. talking about Madison Lennon, yeah. I saw it a lot in high school, and it really stunned me socially. I'm I'm not going to even lie. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Like I couldn't really do anything, and mentally I just was not in a great place. I'm looking back now. I mean, I played video games and shit, but honestly, I was like, I went from like going to the all boys and girls school from like grade one to eight. Then I'm then, then in New York, like, I mean, anybody in New York knows the better high schools are the Catholic are the Catholic high schools. At least it was mm-hmm. back then. I, I don't know how it is now, but I didn't go to those. I went to the bad ones. Like I went to Saint no, the Bronx was not bad. I mean, I went to Saint Raymond's. I think Aquinas was good. Girls was Spelman, but that was co-ed. That's the one I wanted to go to. My mom was like, "Nope." <laughs> My mom was like, "Nope, you're not going to a co-ed school." But I was like, terrible. She wanted me to go to Rice, but that that unfortunately closed. Many alumni came out of that high school. For they never saved that high school. But again, that's another story for another day. But you know, y'all talking about masculinity just got me in my head a lot because honestly, toxic masculinity ruined a lot of shit for me. Yeah, I mean, there's certain family ones I don't even fuck with right now because of toxic masculinity growing up. Like, mm-hmm. give me, I'll give you an example because y'all talking about toxic masculinity. We haven't talked about like family spreading rumors and shit about people being gay. I had an oh, uncle. Yeah. My, I, let me. I'm gonna bring this up. I had an uncle who, because I was in high school, I went to an old boys school. I didn't date. I wasn't in a relationship. Honestly, mentally, I wasn't into. I was. I have to admit this, and now I'm almost forty. And I hate to admit this. It took me to my sophomore year of college to get over an eighth grade crush. I'll be honest. Hmm. Like it it's took, okay. It took, you are not the only one. Bro, I still love my eighth grade crush. What are you talking about, bro? You were not the only one, bro. Nah, I see. I didn't know that back then. So like, I'm just I just like, how many it. boys to men songs have been sung to eighth grade crushes in this room I right now? Like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Oh yeah. Yesterday. Yeah, Shoot. My seventh grade crush. I I had that on. Um, hey, lover, one. I wanted to do some shit like that. Oh, uh, like, hey, lover. Now I want to do shit like that. Like I saw you with your name. Style a, a coach no bag in your hand. Oh, that, 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 really that, that, yeah, that, that, I wanted to do that so bad, but I, like I said, I was just a jabroni. You can't go wrong with LL, bro. Yeah, you can't. Nah, I I wanted, <laughs> 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 nah, but getting back to my, getting back to my point, like I had an uncle of mine, he used to say, me and another one of my cousins were gay because we weren't dating girls when we were high school. Mm. Age. He was like, well, y'all gay, uh, y'all f words. I'm not gonna say that word because we we're yeah. more adults we know, here. We know what you're saying. Yeah. Those who know, no, I'm gonna leave it at that. Yeah. But I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't like I said. I never really messed with him, and then he kind of did my sister dirty a little bit. I don't know mm. if they make up or not. I know they, I know, she, I know he's been a little bit more helpful. But like I said, that's probably one of the main reasons I started drifting from my family because mm. the uncles, him especially. I had another uncle who was like disabled, but. Um, like I said, I don't really talk to him, and I don't know. Like I said, my family's been kind of rough this year. A lot of my aunts have passed. My mom passed mm-hmm. almost 15, 12, 13 years ago. My aunt just recently passed. My favorite aunt, my mm-hmm. mom's when she just recently passed about two two months ago. So honestly, like I don't really my, like my mother's side of the family is gone, like just mm-hmm. gone. Mm-hmm. But the toxic masculinity, it was worse in my high school. Like, and I, I know I've just said on this podcast, I've had fun in high school. You know, we just had jokes, we like like the game burns and stuff. Had a lot of nerdy people, but the toxic masculinity, no matter what environment, it's always it's always popped up. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter what it is, what you do. Like my, like I said, my high school is mostly just. I mean, we had our jocks, we had our athletes. I mean, shit, we had people playing Magic the Gathering after school. Hell, I used to organize Mario Kart Game Boy Advance tournaments after school. So nice. shit. <laughs> Got some deep <laughs> references there. Hell yeah. Right. I ain't mad. Yeah. Listen, we was playing Yu-Gi-Oh. I wish we was playing Mario Kart. <laughs> been in my high school. I was organizing yeah, tournaments back then. Oh, the, I, the, I, the, I thought I had my cards by my school, like, my, you, should, you said the magic bird. You know how I get when you say Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> hey, listen, that's what we now were doing, though. And I was, now my, I ain't gonna hold you, bro. I was a bad kid, bro. I stole now my, my, and then sold it back to him the next day. 
I like that. <laughs> I like that. I did. My school was mostly, <laughs> my school was mostly Magic the Gathering. I, I would have probably still played that, but it was just too expensive to keep up with them cards. Oh yeah. I, yes, I like I was, in, I was in Target. I was in um, Target today. I was looking at a, um, a pack waiting waiting in line. A pack uh, like a like one pack of them was five dollars. I'm like, no. I wouldn't even pay five dollars <laughs> back then. I wouldn't pay five dollars for a Magic the Gathering card. I'm like. I know Pokemon cards yeah. coming back and coming back in the sun. I mean, you can't even get more than five packs out of Target now. I'm like, damn. Yeah, they're, they're going yeah, crazy. Let me find out if I got a charge out of here and didn't know it. I had a hologram when they first dropped, and I sold it for five hundred. And now that thing worth like five thousand. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those OG uh, cards are, are worth. But I was, you know, I was younger. Hey. I was like, Wow, honey, y'all gonna give me five hundred for this? Nah, I was mad. I was mad like when we were cleaning out my house in New York when my, when my dad was selling it. I yeah. found my po- I found my Pokemon cards, the OG set, but it was a, I collected most of the Team Rocket cards, and they were water damaged. I was oh, so pissed. Dang. I was so pissed. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, damn, I could have used yeah, that as a down payment. Oh, that's he, he, I keep that one. That might be worth some money. That's, that's yeah. a rarity. Yeah, that could. Those All right, so real cards. quick, real quick, just to just to bring you back in. Yeah, sorry so <laughs> two things I want to touch on that you all have touched on. Um, the whole the whole animal analogy that I started with, and then Infamous oh, yeah, ran with it, and then Nick jumped on it. Everybody kind of touched on it a little bit. Yeah. One thing about the human race, correction, about certain cultures. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Mm-hmm. They like mm-hmm. to pick and choose what they pull from nature or from anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. in this particular situation, the term of alpha and beta as being the most masculine and de- I, am, I am the man, I am the one to control it all. The in mm-hmm. the in the wolf pack, the yeah. does anyone know where the alpha actually stands? In the middle. Of, I'm not, in the middle. Of, I'm not the very back. Oh, they oh, I thought back middle. to protect He's in the back of the pack. and to watch everybody else. Make sure yeah, nobody's exactly. far behind. What Infamous just said. He stands at the very back because he knows if anybody comes up from behind them, yep. that's where they're going to attack. Exactly. He knows that he left his second in command at the, at top. the front. Exactly. So the you got beta is the, one the regular, the betas in the front, mm-hmm. technically. You beta have the elderly front. and the kids in the middle. Yep. And he's at the back, which means a true alpha watches, watches mm-hmm. more than he talks. Well, first of all, they, they put the terminology uh, alpha. That's what phrase come from. They didn't, here is, they didn't say. Don't go look at There's a reason there's an alpha in, in the wolf pack. There's a reason there's a beta. Like, they took the terminology, but didn't apply what it actually is. What it meant. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm the alpha. I'm the number one. First of all, if that's the case, then only one person can be the can be an alpha. Right. But right. When you take alpha male as a general term, yeah, well, that guy's an alpha because he moves like this. What if, by saying that, now you can't say nobody else is an alpha. Right. Because True. That, that's what that is. But that's how people vote for president too. Like they, yeah. they. That's why we had the last four years we had. Yep. I mean, <laughs> it's not much better at the moment. We're I still working on that part. No Listen. Right. So, oh my goodness. But yeah, that's what the, the you can see the improper application. We also see it a lot. Also, when they were trying to uh, the phrenology, the study of the human head and the shapes, mm-hmm. and trying to say that we weren't intelligent or the bullshit. That you know, we we our pain thresholds are different. Like the, you see that even in yeah. science, where they've tried to call it this pseudoscience crap because it's diminishing of what other people are going through. Right. So you know, yeah, they've been trying to equate this nonsense in a scientific way, like it's a real thing. It's like no, they're just personalities that are more domineering and like to be in the middle and have attention. There's also yeah. people that are running the show from behind the scenes with, with plenty of and those the most cars. Right. Yes, <laughs> and those are the yes. more. Man, so yeah, that that sort of situation uh, is that's one thing that I think this has led into where we are right now. Uh, as I stated, <laughs> as I said it last time, 
it's a very Eurocentric mindset. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh yeah. Bottom line. Mm-hmm. And I think that the sooner the rest of the cultures of the world, including us, realize that and go back to our own thought processes, I think the quicker we can all this will disband. Right. I think that'd because, be a big help. Yeah. I mean, think about it. It's every, possible. Every, every culture that's considered quote unquote a minority, right? Every culture that's considered mm-hmm. a minority, which technically we're not the minority. We're if not. you really think about it, we're not. Um, there are more brown people in the world than anything else. Just putting it out there. <laughs> we're, we're waiting on 2040, 2045, where it's supposed to be parody, where yeah. they're supposed to be like, uh, there is no more one Minority. single class of people yeah. here we're, we're a melting pot South so Park. everybody everybody keep sleeping with everybody love one another let's let's keep it right. positive right spread <laughs> love with the brooklyn way 2040 2040 from the other post huh. from the other um okay. keep doing a good job Talking about he on oh. uh, the white person. oh wow <laughs> he's doing a good job man. Oh. high five from pandemonium yes Man. But uh, but yeah, like the 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 ability to for us to understand and not fall into the a Eurocentric way of thinking, or better, better yet, to pull ourselves out of it, is I think a a strong turning point. Mm-hmm. Um, the conversation I've had a lot of times, and I know me and you've had this before, Nick, and me, I think Infamous and Vogue have had it too, where black males have a problem working together. Mm. because there has to be a alpha quote unquote somebody gotta be in charge or somebody gotta be able to get everybody has to be able to get something out of it mm-hmm. versus being for the community right, right. like yeah, me and Voke haven't worked together at all on, should nope. have been raised on Can't stand that is a community mm. yep. every other I'm sure each of you have seen this down the street from you a certain family bought the house next thing you know is six other family members in the house. Now they own three other houses on the block. Mm-hmm. Everybody got a badass car. Everybody got two whips. And now they didn't bought the street across from them. You yeah. know what I mean? That's what like, you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. But that's one thing we don't do. Now we all we say do. we know it, but yep. don't none of us do it. Nope. Well, and it, you, you're starting to see a lot more of it in the upper echelons of earning. Like, there's a lot more collaboration. Right. But unfortunately, like, something simple, like, this is going to sound crazy. Every, all, each one of us, we work our butts off, put away $10,000. We decide we're going to buy a strip mall. That mm-hmm. way we own the property. And then, like, that that's kind of how it's supposed to work. But unfortunately, the this air of competition, like, I got to do it myself. This mm-hmm. uh, Honestly, like, I, I didn't personally grow up like that. It was always like that. Like I said, the theatrical side or, or even the sports team side or military side. It's like we don't get anywhere unless we're working together. And right. you see in public life, though, that it's everybody's been pushed so hard against each other. And now social media doesn't help that at all. Right. I, unfor- unfortunately, oh, yeah. we should be building together is what really should be happening. I'm really hoping we're starting to make that turn, especially as people are getting into this more like freelance culture where they're actually controlling more of their money. They're not getting swept up in so much of the, the corporate stereotyping mm-hmm. of life. But I'm hoping we're getting past some of that. I'm seeing it more in rich people, but I'm, I'm hoping we get to see it more at our level where we can kind of play in the game a little bit, too. So yeah. that's one thing I think came out of the freaking pandemic is the fact more and more people are being their own boss. A lot mm-hmm. of more people are doing side hustles, starting their own business yep. to the point where if you go to any fast food, no for fa- I know for fact in Georgia, there's about every fast food restaurant got a nine hire sign. Yep. Oh yeah. And yeah. got how much you're gonna make an hour. Mm-hmm. I've seen a McDonald's talking about you can start with 14, 13 an hour. I'm like I saw 17 nah. uh, an hour up the street from my house the other day. Yep. Wow. Amazing. I couldn't believe it. I was like, that is way too high. For, <laughs> right? It made 16, you think for a minute. 16, I was going to say, 16 year olds don't need $17 an hour. Good Lord. But at the same time, I'm like, if you're working those hours, though. $17 an hour at a McDonald's, yo fucking ice cream machine better, better work. be fire. <laughs> it should work every day of the week. I with the swirl. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hey. 
that ice cream machine better tell me what I want before I get there. <laughs> you want to talk to It's, it's got an app. You can song. punch right in. Right. But. Now, but um, yeah. I wanted to say uh, on this topic, like, it was really important for us to talk about it specifically because uh, Shorty just sent me a text. Well, she sent me a text when we first started the, the podcast. But she said to mm-hmm. me, she said, and I'm going to read it word for word. She said, I like this type of subject. I would like to know how men see it and their opinion about it. It's a subject that's very touched from a female perspective, but little is heard from men endorsing it or even considering it as important in regards to the fact that we were talking about toxic masculinity today as our main topic. Gotcha. And then before we even start talking about it, like when she opened up the... Mm-hmm. The stream and saw that was the topic. She was like, "Yeah, I want to see what men have to say about this." Well, I'm. I, well, I mean, I, I, I don't know if 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 uh, I can be open for a moment, but I came from an abusive home. Uh, my dad mm-hmm. was was extremely abusive to myself and my brother and sister and my mom, and um, it was something that my introduction, much like yours with the school and everything, like your early childhood development on what a man is, a man's going to hurt me. Like that's what my perspective was starting out. So unfortunately that in the back of your mind, I mean, and of course, you know, you find ways to fight through it and grow from that and stuff. But I mean, when your first impression is that, well, shit, your whole life is toxic at that point. Just trying to figure out how to unravel that hot mess from a person that was just broken and destroying a family with no one to talk to. Right. Because it wasn't what isn't it isn't manly to talk about it. Exactly. Right. 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 That makes sense. That makes and total that, and that's sense. the thing. Uh, I feel that women have more support emotionally growing up mm-hmm. than boys do. I'll agree with that. Oh yeah, you know they have they they can go talk. They they have their girls' nights where they mm-hmm. they everybody talks about what's going on and why they feel this way. And this dude did this to me, so I feel this way. Or how, how should I handle this? This, that, and the other. I mean, I got lucky. I was lucky enough to have certain individuals that I could could go talk to that i felt Mm -hmm. safe talking to i'll be honest nick was one of those people for me oh well thanks i felt no problem bro like i felt as when my youth like i had to talk oh we go way Uh, way back okay okay. we go way back (laughs) like a little homie back back. (laughs) oh okay that's fine wait 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 i gotta i gotta ask you do you go as far back as (laughs) panda wearing the floor as far back Oh yeah, bro. Oh yeah, going to dance club with him. Yeah, way before that. Way before that. Before he had facial hair way back. Yeah. Him and his little brother tag teaming around, occasionally getting a ride home from the museum back. For you later on. Oh, word, word. (laughs) Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny, man. That's good. Well, I appreciate that. Like, I, I felt that I felt that you were somebody that was open and receptive to talking to, especially if you're, you know, gosh, I'm 40 right now. Uh, so let's see. How old are you? What are you? Uh, 35? 36. 36. I guess it's not as much. I guess I'm it seemed like more when I was like a grown man and you were like right. a little kid in <laughs> middle like, school and high 30 school. 30 is a different situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hit that 30. It comes. It comes at you. Oh, and that fedora, I'm pretty sure I was at that place with the fedora when we went yeah, out that were. night. That you picture is probably were. from one of our going out nights back when we used to go dance at the club. <laughs> yep. 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 Why I'm trying to impress them it. ladies. <laughs> I would not be surprised. Man. All right, oh. all right. Enough about that. Enough about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, th- that's the thing, though. But having those spaces, and a lot of us and our youth, we don't even today, like a lot of young boys don't have that open space to mm-hmm. not feel like they're going to be judged the next day. You know, like um, you were talking about your son, you know, I don't, don't want to cry in front of my boys, you know, and this is like, yeah, you got your boys, but your boys aren't going to talk about this stuff with you at that age because they're in the same boat as you. That's right. You know. So unless you happen to bond because you both went through the same scenario or, you know what I mean? Something Mm -hmm. like that happened where, you know, it's safe to open up to this person. You've got nobody. So you close that up. You bottle that up. You find outlets, whether it's sports, whether it is a toxic release point of whatever it may be, 
whether it's your gaming or whatever, you know, whatever the case may be, you try to find a way to release that. But until you actually come to grips with the only way this is going to work is actually talking it out. Mm-hmm. And most of us don't hit that until we're at at least 20 at a minimum. We've screwed over so many people's lives by the oh, time yeah. we're 20. Well, you like, think about the amount of the conversations you've had with females. I and... didn't jack some lives up. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Well, I think that's one of the things. Like, I try to turn it on my, uh, with my son. I try to turn it on the, on our ear. Like, I, I do it as a part of our, our bodily care. We go out for our, we call it dude's day. We get mm-hmm. a little breakfast. We go out and get our fades cleaned up. You know, a little time in the barber shop, get to talk with the guys, you know, you know, and Ain't we have like some real like ex- exactly. And and that was the thing that I always wanted as a kid. We were always too poor to go to a barber shop. And uh my mom was white and didn't understand the barber shop meant to the black community. So <laughs> oh uh, boy. I, I, yeah. I love my mom. Barbershop love my is mama, experience. But it's not just it, a is. Cut, bro. it is it is it's so true. And I didn't realize that until it's way way later, way later. Right, but like right. but, but we talk about real stuff. Like I'm like, okay, first and foremost, we're in this car. We're on our way to, to our dudes day. Uh, it's an open forum. And if occasionally you need to say one swear word, you get two in the car and then we don't do it again. Cause sometimes you got to say, <laughs> damn, like, man, no, damn, yeah, daddy. Yeah. Yeah. And he's 13. Yeah. So I don't want him to say the F word in the wrong place. Like freaking yeah. Mark. No, 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 no. Hold up. Hold up. We got to fix your street cred here, bro. You, you, <laughs> you can't. Yeah, so, so it, it's a, it's yeah. a growth and cleaning experience. Like you need to right. clean out your emotions. You need, so yeah. what's going on in your life? You got to, are you talking to a girl? Are you talking to a boy? I don't know what's going on in your life. I'm just trying to be supportive. Supportive, you know, we and, both. And, uh, hey, hey, what am I going to be Polly? Hey, who knows? Camping. What am I going to say? <laughs> I mean, shit, it's 2021. We're, we're not past racism yet, so I, I, I I'm lost. I'm lost. <laughs> we, w- we never will be. Oh, uh, bro, tell me. But so, like, as a part of our cleaning process, that's important. So, right. like, I try to, I try to make mm. sure, like, say what you need that. to say. If you can't say it in front of your mama, it's okay. But if we're gonna talk, we're right here. I do the same thing for my girls too, though. We've had the good touch, bad touch talk. I'm like, if you need to talk to me, we'll go out. We have our daddy daughter day, and we go, you know, we get you squared away with whatever you're needing to do or whatever. But like, you can talk to me if if you're not comfortable talking to anybody else. Talk to me, and I, I'll at least try to hear you out and help you out. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I love it. You're a good dad. Uh, I tried, man. My dad was shit. Whew. I had a template for the wrong thing. Might as well try something different, right? I hear that. I mean, <laughs> but that's the one thing that a lot of people catch that. A lot of people don't catch that. That right there. But Hunter, what is one thing we always say? Learn from everything you do. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's Even right. if it's the bad thing. Yeah. yeah. Like with my siblings, I'm the oldest of six. <sighs> and man. like I always feel like my goal was always to try to be a a template for them to follow, you know what I mean? So they had they had a, a goal line at least. I don't want them to not have nothing, you know. Right, right. And so, like, I right. did my best as I could with high school and college. College, mm-hmm. I fell off. I'm not gonna lie, I fell off in college, but yeah. they all went, you know what I'm saying? They all mm-hmm. graduated the top of their class in high school, higher hey. than me, and I was number four. Like, hey, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, they all came That's out cool. in high came to college and like dominated. It's like I'm gonna leave with a three eight. I'll be back later to finish this. Like yeah, you know right. what I mean? Like they did stuff like that. I, 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 I barely made it out with a two oh. But the point was, I made it out. <laughs> right, right. I still you still got to call me doctor. Damn it. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so, with that being the case, it's a. But it, it, the, even in the things that I did wrong, and it took my brother telling me that one day, he was like, "Look, I know you feel like you messed up a lot, but even in your mess ups." I have to say thank you because yeah, in you messing you. up, right. I learned yeah. not to do that and go down that path mm-hmm. or what could happen if I follow that path. Right. Right. You know, and it's just like Nick was saying, like, those are, those are things that for the listeners, I want you all to keep that in mind. Like everything is a learning opportunity, whether it's positive or negative, no, the negative ones don't feel as good. <laughs> Mm, but facts. as long as you learn something from it, it was not a waste of your time. Uh, that whole conversation about people and relationships, you know, kind of a squeak, quick detour, but oh, it was it was a waste of my time. It was a waste of my time being with this person or that person. No, you gained valuable insight into you, your psyche, your emotional support and stability, and your emotional and physical needs. If you gained any of that information, it was a positive experience. And you move on that way. The next time, it's a better situation for you. Amen. I heard that. 
you know? So it's all about learning. You, you can you can look at anything negative any day of the week. You don't have to, though. You don't have to. So please keep that in mind as we you know, say as we're going through all of this, but that's just one of those things. Um I got a question. So Nick, have you seen Rising of the Shield Hero? I have not. Oh, I, I, I if I'm gonna be on this show, I gotta get up on my anime game. Uh that's I, fine. That's I, fine. I, I'm a Star Trek <laughs> I'm nerd. I'm transitioning into the anime realm. I'm trying to like my brother in law is really big into it. I've seen the essential ones, Akira. One of my absolute okay. favorites, uh, Ghost in the Shell, like the classics, you know, the, okay, the, the okay, pillars okay. of it. But I haven't been as involved. Uh, I think I, I've watched Gundam Wing, uh, some of the, some of the more obscure the things, the, some of the OG, the OG stuff. He's down. Right, right, yeah. right. But so, like, no, the, I'm watching Infamous feel, over here. <laughs> I would say, feel free to send me links. I will learn. Uh, I want good recommendations. I love good stories. I'm a cyberpunk nerd, okay. so I'm a big fan of that. You're gonna blow your phone up. You might need. To oh go. boy, he's like a lot of guys. <laughs> I'm gonna be coming on here just like mind blown by some of these stories because I know how big and dense some of these stories are. Oh, yeah, real, bro. nice. Have it crying, have Mickey. Fist of the North Star. I'm a big fan of Fist of the North Star. Oh, yeah. He named it all the old Rommel had. That's what I'm saying. He knows his stuff. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring this up to the, the group. And I'm, so, for the rest of you who've seen it, I'll give you a general, Nick. The guy is sent to another world, Sinaseki, and he becomes one of the four main heroes. He's the shield hero. He's mm -hmm. got a sword, bow, spear, and then the shield. The shield is the most hated of the heroes. Haters. <laughs> Hated. But they do this man so dirty. So dirty. When I say it's th there's one character, if I put her picture up, everyone in here would start booing and throwing something at their cameras. Bro, like, I mean, he's a who, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean? I, I was, to the I was, point I'm that like, her actual name got changed to the B word by the end of the show. Literally yeah. in the it show. Was in the show. That was her name. In the show. It's canon. Like, <laughs> Wow. Well, damn. She got two That's names. some shade. She got you names. Make me break my screen. <laughs> two names. Don't forget the second name. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to give him too much. He got. He got to watch it. Oh it's yeah. A very good storyline though. Shit was it's the second name. Storyline. <laughs> it wasn't. But, I might have to check this out. I mean, you can call people names. I'm all about that. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got to watch. You got to watch it. It's great. It's great. Yeah, and Full Metal Alchemist, but that's another story. And Full, uh, Metal, Full Alchemist. Metal Alchemist. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good. One. You got some names. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the reason I brought it up is because in talking about toxic masculinity and talking about masculinity be, in, in contrast and in comparison, do you all feel, those who have watched the show, do you feel that he de he defined... Toxic masculinity no. or just masculinity? Just masculinity. Just masculinity? Yeah, I don't yeah, think he I'll, was treated toxic. But I, think, yeah, I, I, I feel like that was the most masculine. Oh, is he defined? Because... What about when he went specifically to search for a slave? Um, and his only yeah, reason for having to. that slave was what? To fight for him. Exactly. I'm going to use you. I'm Wait, going what? to I'm going to force you to do what I want to do. Okay, but this is this is my thing with that. Even mm -hmm. though that was his intent, the the heart that he did have, he never made her do something that would cause harm to her. Period. Exactly. Like he still looked out for her best interest for the whole time, no matter how mad they or whatever happened. Make giving her a better life than she would have. Everybody hey. Hey, 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 how's it going? Hey, she, hey, just woke up. Up. <laughs> she just woke up. <laughs> I give it up for the intro of this show. Right on. Okay. Appreciate. So that and that's kind of what I what I wanted to get at was that's kind of the reason I brought that up is because I feel that certain traits, certain actions are seen as toxic, hmm. right? Even though the person is not toxic. Right. 
He, you know, what I'm saying whether they're being masculine or not, the trait can be seen as negative, but it doesn't have to be toxic. I think that's what I was meant to say. That's exactly. the better word. There's it can be a negative trait, mm-hmm. not masculinity, toxic. Masculinity. Hmm. That's a that's you a know, tough line to walk too. It, it is. is. It's a it's it a great is. line. It's a great it line. Is. Because as a, as a man, as a man I can say, not- okay, I, okay, so for me, as a husband, as a, uh, the man in a relationship, my goal, my responsibility, myself, is to provide. Mm-hmm. Yeah, provide for my family, provide for my woman, provide for my kids. Yes. It is also to protect. You know what I'm saying? I should be the first line of defense if anything goes down. Yes. Those are the two main things that I feel... I am responsible for mm-hmm. partially from rearing partially because it's just, it's what I was raised in. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's who, who I am. Some of it's instinctual too. And instinctual. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So in doing that, I may say, you may say stand- well. I'll give you this. I'll give you this. <laughs> Oh, did it, did it freeze? Wait, no, 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 no. I had to think about it. I had to think about it. I was like, oh. no. Um, if I ask my lady to stand on the, if we're walking down the street and I have her stand on the inside. That's now you all know what that means. I would mm-hmm. fight you if you didn't. <laughs> but you all know what that means. Mm-hmm. You all know why. Yeah, yeah. I say that. Oh people, yeah, I, I got cursed out one time about that. I See cursed out saying? one time. What? I, I got cursed out one time me. when I was with a female friend. It was like, why are you like, yeah. like, but she's not my girlfriend. But like, that's still your female friend. You should have let. I was like, yeah. I was like, I didn't know. I legit did not know that. I did not know that. Well, you know. And some older gentleman pointed it out. She was like, I was like, huh? But, right, but it was an like, older gentleman. The lady yeah, so, never so, said anything. Just made me was mad. Yeah, some of them don't know why you do it, but we know. It, yeah, we know. We, you and gotta do it. So gotta then do they it. get, they start, they argue with us about that, and it's like it has nothing to do with you being weaker than me. It is just a protective thing. It's an instinctual right. thing. Danger can come oh. from this direction. I want to make sure I'm there to take care of that. <laughs> Instinctually, I appreciate your existence in my life, and I'm trying to prevent anything negative from happening from to happening. me. That's kind of how I explain it. It's, yes. it's not the toxic way. It's more like a, look, I, I find value in you being near me, and I would never want anything bad to happen to you, so if I have to go first, I'm okay with going first if you're exactly. still here. I'd rather it be me than you. So, right. I mean, and you if she so decided she was going to do the same me. thing. <laughs> okay, oh, go ahead. Triggered? Sir? So, no, no. Not like so when he was like and the woman was like, You think I can protect myself or whatever you said? Yeah, like yeah. that double standard or that that mm-hmm. fight for equality that women do is very triggers me. They right, want to be yeah. treated so equal in certain aspects, but once they get the treatment, they want to be like, well, I'm a woman. And that that, that, like that's, that that's like a that's that's a little trigger because I was dating a girl, mm-hmm. and like at the time we we had like basically the same job, and she hit me up. I had just paid my rent. She was still staying with her friends, so she didn't really have to pay rent. So she hit me up after I want to go get something to eat. I'm like, sure. We went out, and like she looked at me, hey, I'm like. You, we now mind you, we've been there for a while. It's been times like we switched off or whatever. Right. And I'm thinking like you asked, like you was gonna pay or whatever. You, you invited me. You invited me. Yeah, exactly. So when I said you want me to pay, she was like, like she slid it to me. I was like, I don't mind. I pay, even though you know I was at the point where like I was kind of close. But yeah, even when I go out with other people and I know somebody's gonna pay, I don't ever get exactly what I want. Can I get something like you know cheaper? Or whatever? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so she was like, "Oh, you're the man. You're supposed to pay. I'm. Like, I'm supposed to pay." And she's like, yeah. "I'm like, but you. We just had this talk about you know tit for tat, so we can get money together and do what we plan on." But she's like, "Well, you know, I'm talking to my friends and feel like I shouldn't be doing this and that." I'm like, "Well, you should date friends then. Like, we literally broke up after that. I paid. Yeah. I still paid <laughs> but we yeah. never forgot that. Facts. Look, back. We had, back. we had an understanding. We we knew what we had going on." And you're letting the outside source, you know, mess with that. Influence. Like, don't ask for something that you don't want. Right. That, that, Look, that's I'm going to get on like some people nerves right now. 
<laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Go ahead, dog. Look at this meme. I, I was reading this meme earlier. I'm going to put it in the screen, and then I'm going to read it to y'all. Y'all want to be married and don't split the bills, but get a divorce and want half his shit. Yep. Mm. Yeah. We clap it up, though. Yep. Yep. That, it, it definitely You want to is. be married, but don't pay for nothing. But then when you get a divorce, you want half his shit. How that work? How that work? How sweat? How sweat? What did you put into that? Yo. No. And, and I get you ain't got I get the argument. Hold on. And I get the you I, I, you I get the point to that. I get the point too. I get the point too. But well, I, I get the conversation of, you know, well, I, I was there mentally and emotionally and physically. Yes, but so was he. Regardless of how much and I got for that. Injury, I got felonies for that. It, it, no matter how much emotional injury you think he did not put into it. He still had to put it into it because you were there every day. Right. He still had to interact with you on the daily basis. So there was some level of emotional energy that was used every day. Now, this goes into a whole different conversation because I feel that the and I, I think I've talked to you all about this before. My, my whole premise with the energy is sick. Everything is cyclic. Mm -hmm. All energy is cyclic and everybody has a certain level of battery for emotional, spiritual, and physical energy, um, or intellectual, I call it, intellectual energy, intellectual, spiritual, and uh, emotional. Everybody's batteries are different levels. Everybody has a different, but everybody is 100%, and it, everybody's is different. Me personally, I have, I have a large emotional battery. I can sit there, I'm an empath. I can sit there and keep everybody in the room running on 100%, and I will still have 50 to 60% left when I get home. However, if I don't get to recharge that battery when I get home, when I go out tomorrow and have to deal with that same room of 50 people that I'm giving them all that energy because they don't have it, or I'm helping all these other individuals, as you all know, most of my background is nonprofit organization and you know, curriculum development and working with kids and stuff like that, or customer service in general. Anybody who's worked customer service knows that each person that you deal with on a daily basis take a little bit of your emotional battery with them. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah! Every time, and if you do not have a large emotional battery. battery, you cannot make it. Yep. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And if you find somebody to date or to be with who does not have the ability to recharge that battery energy that you need, that is going to fail eventually. That is yep. just my personal belief. Whatever your key one is, for me, it's emotion. You know what I mean? For some people, mm -hmm. it's their spiritual battery that's more important to them. Mm -hmm. Others, it's their intellectual battery. Mm -hmm. And I get that, you know, but it, whatever is your key battery, or if you're equal among all of them, you want to make sure you find somebody who has that same battery pack <laughs> as you. Because you they have to be able to recharge. Preferably Sony or Xbox, uh, rechargeable batteries would be fantastic. Exactly. If, you, if, if she's got those, it's, it's on. <laughs> Whatever, my girl kicked my butt in Street Fighter, so I'm cool. She did. Oh, it was hilarious. <laughs> it was hilarious. Who's she using? My girl beat me in Mortal Kombat two weeks ago, so. Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> nice, see? Yeah, but yeah, you don't play Mortal Kombat, though, so you got an excuse. <laughs> What's your excuse? Dude, dude? Man, dude, oh, because she, I'm she's, a, a, she's an OG Street Fighter. No, nah, she's like, an OG, she, bro. She, she, she she like, what, who did she use? Uh, she Her preference, it's either Baraka or, Ch or Chun-Li. Oh, she OG, bro. She put some money. She put some work in. She put some work in. And she then it's, Mal it's, Malina in, in, it's Melina on uh, Mortal Kombat. But I'm on even footing there. You know, we, tr we try right. to chop it up a little bit more. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I definitely feel what you're saying. <laughs> like, especially in relationships, Sorry. like the, the meme was fantastic because like it kind of points out the the the. The, the imbalance, like the double standard, and like uh, uh, Infamous was saying, like you know, how how can you expect all of this to to come together if both parties aren't invested in it? Like that's really mm -hmm. the biggest thing that that I get from it, uh, especially like in my marriage. Like we went through a lot, especially over the last couple of years of trying to of adjusting, you know, what mm -hmm. the dynamics of our relationship are. Like I was the the sole breadwinner. Like she was working in childcare for a long time, and then like transitioned into a really great job where she actually was getting recognized and kicking some butt. And then at the same time, like the pandemic shut down live entertainment. So my whole job was shut down for, I've, I've been home for way too long. 
I got to get out of the house anyway. <laughs> so like, you know, making the transition into being a business owner and f trying to find projects and trying to get that next, you know, paycheck rolling in and stuff has been a big transition for us here. But, you know, for the first time, she's the one who's really making like serious bank and construction. So, right. I mean, I'm not going to argue about being able to work on something that I've wanted to for the first 10 years of our relationship that I can build into something over the next year and get it. So it's forever for like a, a good something that we own and don't have to, you know, apologize it's to anybody else, but it takes support that. to do that though, too. I couldn't yeah, do it on my own. Yeah. It's funny. You said that there was a meme that was going around a while ago. I don't know if y'all saw this one or not. It was a guy texting his girl he was like hey babe uh i got this uh promotion oh no i lost my job and you know i'm hoping that we can make this work blah 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 this and the other and she basically was like wait a minute what do you mean you lost your job nah we done awesome. this and the other Damn. And wow yeah he was like well i'm hoping i can go to school now because i paid for your schooling and you've got your job, so I can I can finally go back to school. Blah blah yeah. blah. Yeah, follow some like, nah, I can't have yeah. no deadbeat dude. Blah blah blah. Yeah, and I, I saw that. Yeah, and he was in like, school. "Well, that's good to know. I actually just won the jackpot on a millionaire, and I got a promotion at work yesterday and you as out. well. Mm -hmm. So pack your stuff by the time I get home. <laughs> oh baby. I'm oh wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Well, but then yeah. you also see the other side of that, like Wendy Williams was going off on some TikTok or YouTuber uh, that she retired her husband, who was an LAPD officer. Yeah. Like she's like was had finally made it to a point on YouTube where it was making enough money. And it's like, I don't want you to have to go out and be shot at or exactly. be in danger every damn day. Like, I don't understand why it it is one or the other. Like, why can't one feed the other or help right. the other grow? Right, and, and right, 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 right. Yeah. Again, that's the that's the toxic part of it is I got to do it by my damn self and and right. her, she be damned or he be damned. It's like the reality is, you know, I'm not nearly as good as I was until I got to this relationship exactly. and had my family. Yeah, and I mean, if, especially if you reach the 20 year point, most cop jobs. I mean, you could pretty much yeah. put in your papers and that's a wrap. I mean, well, and he was at 15 years and she finally made it. It's like, I don't want you to leave this house in a bulletproof vest ever again. And then Wendy Williams had the nerve to get on her like she was, you know, some kind of beaten, battered wife. You know, why are you sub Mama. subjugating yourself to your man? It's like, no, nah, I don't have, I don't get that. Oh, because yeah, I love him. What? First of all, you said Wendy Williams. Nobody, the people who listen to Wendy Williams. <laughs> it just blew my life. mind after her whole relationship and all that. Right. Stuff failed. Up, she had something to say. About I said, that's why I just said karma. Yeah. That's why I just said karma. Like, I don't like Wendy Williams. I've never liked it. I, I used to be a Wendy fan. fan. I used to be a Wendy fan, a Wendy fan back in the day. Wendy Williams is built like a blow pop. Oh, you say a Wendy's fan? Like slushies, right? Like the shakes? You talk, that's what you're talking no, about? Right? Wendy no, Wendy Williams. Did you say you're blow pop? Redhead, right? yeah. Oh, my God. Wendy oh, you're talking about the redhead, like right? I've, I've never. No, we ain't talking about that, that Wendy. Related to, re related I made to the it king. Up just now. <laughs> Keep, keeps the. Keeps the... <laughs> Not that Wendy's. Think about no, it. That's the Baconator Wendy. We're talking about another Wendy's. So true. I always thought she had an alien head. See. Y'all wrong. <laughs> we, we're not gonna sit here and bad talk Wendy because we're gonna end up on her show. Watch. Oh, we will. We will. <laughs> no, her show's done. Her show's Listen, done, though. Her show's not getting renewed. Her show's not getting renewed. Uh, it, so, it should Look, never got. Well, she was having a lot of health problems and stuff. So, no shade on, on Wendy. On it was just show. a really bad take on something that was really positive and kind that somebody it was really doing was. for their husband. Yeah. yeah. That's she, just show she, she was getting old. That's just a thought she getting old. Her husband. No, oh how dare gosh. you say how dare a woman love her husband? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> God forbid he not love. be the dirt on the floor. God right. forbid. But, um, but, but that was a good story. Was... That was a good story, though. That was a good mm. story. Just but, it's um... sad that that Wendy kind of ruined the whole flow of that story. The point, mm -hmm. the whole point of that story was like you stick to it, like you like every couple has that. Like yeah. you have a breadwinner or not someone, someone's player too. Yep. We, we're in the video game turn. Hold up, Some hold people on. are playing too. The fact that you said that, that was the perfect analogy. I saw that the other day. It was on a keychain. It was like a, a couple's keychain. Mm -hmm. It was like, you will you be my player too for life? And I was oh, like, yes, that yes. is the I sweetest the thing proposal. in the oh. world. Well, and like that's that's the funniest part about it is like when you really think about it, it just it's a transition over time. Who's gonna be the number one, number two? Especially mm -hmm. when it comes to the kids, mama tends to be number one. Like right. it, you can't say it, you can say you can have a little input, but she's gonna tell you what the hell's gonna happen with them <laughs> kids. That's and terrible. then the extent of like you know, the finances around the house, like that's usually a pretty good group effort. Everybody kind of takes a hold, but like uh my lawn, honey, I don't want you to mess up the lines of my lawn. Fair enough. Right. Like 
Yeah, you know? I, I, I mow my lawn. That's cool. That's how I like it. Yeah, like, that's the way it goes. <laughs> right, so like right. we just know our lanes. So number one and number two, like it just depends on what game we're playing. Exactly. Exactly. And even to that, like what Nick was saying earlier, uh, just being transparent with myself, um, me and my wife started there. I had just moved Alabama to Atlanta. Issue happened. Me and my dad was at odds because I was staying with him. I was mm -hmm. homeless. When I said this woman stood by me and helped me get back my feet. So Gay Bay is a true. And That's a ride or die. Like, yeah, Bay yes. Is I started. I started from the bottom, started from UPS, jumped UPS to the UPS and Sam's Club, then just Sam's Club. And I was presented with an opportunity to get my CDLs. Nice. Best thing I ever did. You know, I hate job yeah, flat there. <laughs> but I I appreciate her to the point where it's like I never have to need for anything because either not I can either if I think I need something, she already got it. That's or right. she's already got on the supply right. to go get it. Until it That's comes team, to my milk at first. She never get my milk when I want to get my milk. <laughs> 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 Don't tell her that I But um like when we first came to our relationship, like it, the the energy we had was like we're gonna talk about the stuff for the future. When I realized I wanted to date her long term, I'm like, okay, uh, how do you feel about this? I think I paid for our first two dates, mm -hmm. or first three dates, and after that, it was like, oh, I got it this time, or I did it this time, or like, uh, right. I think who that Angelica party we went to. Yeah. So I got off work, and she called me she's like, we got invited to a dinner at my cousin. I knew I was like, man, I just paid my dad. I was, at that time, I was my dad. I paid him rent um, for staying with him. It was like it wasn't much, but still, I paid him, and I would put money aside to get my own car. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, but I really want to see her this week. So I went, and like, um, she ended up paying for everything, and it was it was kind of like I wasn't expecting. I had I had the money to pay, but she knew what I was going through, so she right, she right. had my back on that. But squad, right her there. cousin. This is the thing, like, when her cousin saw that she paid, he had something to say about it. Mm. And, you know, we, we kind of straightened it there, whatever. But it was just like, you know, not everybody's situation is the same, and right. not everybody thinks the same. Right. Like, if you're going right. to be in a relationship with somebody, or if you're a partner with anybody, I don't care if it's like Monica or whatever, it's always going to be give and take. And that makes it better than just having one person be the dominant over everything. Like, yeah. even if you're playing Mario, you're gonna need Luigi for some missions, just like that one me on Mario. You gotta, you gotta kill Yoshi. You have to, you're not gonna win unless you kill. Yoshi. Am I right? Oh yeah, that love. Yes, yeah, true. Yeah. That true. Was, that was, oh. I'm gonna get beat up after. Give it up for solid is. teams too, and partnerships yes. and relationships. Give it up oh, for yeah, solid yeah. teams, man. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. It, In anime, it there's no one character that stands alone. Amen. Right. That. Except Wait, let me think. That. No one character stands alone. Mm, now, now, point here, now, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna mess with y'all real quick. You ready? Uh -oh. We just went full circle with everything. If male and female, if we all started taking relationships as a partnership, which means you can look at a business partnership, whatever it means. Partnership means all parties are equal. Mm -hmm. All parties are providing equal support well no matter what what area may be in there is equal support being provided right. if we can then take that from our homes and apply it to those we know around us mm -hmm. every relationship is a partnership and by relationship i don't just mean where you going romantic where you going. right right every relationship Anytime you have a conversation with somebody, you have now started a new relationship with that person. And that's what I need people to understand. Mm -hmm. You know, every time you speak to someone new, you say hi to the bagger at, at Walmart. That is now a relationship that you formed. You can choose to. And hold on. Let's see. Okay. Now, I'm, sorry. Soapbox. So I am a huge, we all know I'm a huge gamer. We all oh, are. Mm -hmm. We all yeah, are. Nothing in that, Nick. D&D. Uh -huh. &D. <laughs> He was chewing on ice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> D and D, you have the option 
to go left or right when you see the fork in the road? Which decision are you going to make? You have an NPC in front of you. He is the bagger at Walmart. Do you say hello? Do you see how his day is going? Or do you ignore this person and act like he does not exist? Which one are you going to do? If you it were playing a video game, game, you would talk to that man because he may have a quest for you. That's all True. I'm saying. Sometimes you don't want to oh, do that Lord. quest, though, because you already in the middle of like <laughs> You already got and like that's very true. Your plate. You're like, yo, I know if I talk to him, he's gonna give me another one. I gotta finish these first, bro. I'm gonna come back. I'm it's gonna like destiny. You keep going back to the same raid. Yeah, me, exactly. Keep going back to the same raid. And <laughs> this is why I used to wear headphones a lot when I went to the supermarket or any shopping experience. I was that guy. I put my earphones in. So, <laughs> I, I, I gotta say, like just to say, I, I gotta it, say it like this: each relationship don't treat him like that one Pokemon. That no. got everybody pass and they go back. Y'all wrong. <laughs> you know, I've been wrong. owned by mm-hmm. everybody. Oh my gosh! Sorry, <laughs> y'all wrong. Y'all wrong for that. Anyway, <laughs> but gotta no, catch them all though. and release them. And release them. Catch and release. Catch and release. <laughs> it works but in Pokemon. It works in fishing. That's how life <laughs> is. You know, you want to make sure that you watch those relationships because every time it's a chance to be a new, you know what I'm saying? It can go in a different direction. Mm-hmm. And so you just make sure that you provide what you would want provided in that interaction. If everybody did that across the board, we wouldn't have half the situations that occur. Nah. Nah. You know? man. man, Panda, you mentioning that, you make me think about a story. Uh I don't know if I want to go into the story right now. But hey, go ahead. Relationship- We've been around everything else. All right. Here's Everybody a story. had a story but you. Yeah. All right. Here's a story. That's okay. Nice. We're talking about, we're talking about, like, you're just saying, like, relationships with cashiers and things like that. I remember one summer I was in college, mm-hmm. me and my homeboy, every Friday after we, we, we used to do the summer camps for the kids. So, like, our college, like, one of our boys in college hooked up with summer jobs. We just, you know, helping the kids out with summer camp, things like that. So, every Friday we come home. We go to Popeyes. Every time we went to Popeyes, it was the same cashier there. You said, this, "Like I said, this is how this bad is I was. <laughs> this is how bad I am." Like, like, thank God my girlfriend's with me because this is how oblivious I was to a lot of shit. But every time she, she was always super flirty, super touchy. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. And you like, no, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, my boy was my, my boy was the side of me like what the like like because he went to high school with me but he I was like, not my, like a lot of my high school um friends that knew like I never had a girlfriend I didn't even talk about girls back then mm-hmm. so so he was like yo you know she's trying to flirt with you I'm like no she not she's being extra nice and he like <laughs> he like really I'm like yeah I'm like you had a solid wingman. He, right. he tried. Right. He was trying. My boy, he was, trying. He, was, he, was try, he was trying to inch me. I'm like, yeah, what? Like, like, every time that woman was like, you should try to get her number one of these times we go, go to Popeyes. I'm like, why would I date the woman? Like, I, I, I was not putting two and two together. I really was not putting two and two and together. This, was a, this is when he did not talk to the NPC people. He should have uh, talked to the NPC. Because you would have gotten yourself a nice little quest. Right. Yeah, I would have another quest. Or some hey, Popeyes. That, that quest Ooh, you need three to Popeyes. <laughs> See, Popeyes. I want to think, you know, uh, uh, retrospect looking back, I remembered one of my homeboy, one of my neighbors used to work in that Popeye. That's enough. I, I'm looking back like, why did I never fuck with her? Like, one, like a couple of years ago, I was like, wait a minute. I was like, I was like oh, yeah, my home, my neighbor, my neighbors, my neighbors, one of my neighbors worked in that Popeye's. I was like, oh, <laughs> and she she's one of them nosy neighbor types. So I, I had to make sure. <laughs> I didn't know when her work schedule was. I was like, Ugh. but. <laughs> Another NPC situation, like I used to have a, a teller at the bank. I used to flirt with me all the time, but I didn't think she was gonna give me a time because she knew my. Bank. I was just about to say, but this man, man bro, so the so bros trolling. He just, he just ain't. Let us find he just ain't accepting. Okay, okay. Here. Rod, we might have to introduce play you play to some it. toxic masculinity, and uh, <laughs> now, see, <laughs> this is what happens when you raise. I, I never, I always hated the term talking and Macaulay because honestly, I was raised, most of my family was women. So, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. um, it's kind of obvious based on this story. But uh, I remember, like, the same time I had, like, this bank tell, like, you know, I used to go drop my paycheck off and she used to be super nice. She's like, oh, you're cute, you know. Blah, blah. And I'm just like, oh, well, you're thank cute. You. I would have been like, let's account. go to dinner. What are we talking about? Like, bank you account, me, you know? What are we hollering at here? <laughs> 
Like I'm 1920 in college. I mean, well, my mom has fumbled the bank. Well, and she's already she's already seen your bank account, so right, you're in the clear there. Yeah, exactly. Right. I'm like, oh, she's just probably being nice. She probably being nice. And then funny enough, that's maybe like a couple months summer. I'm walking. I've like, been one of the biggest um, Soundview Park in the Bronx. So I'm, I'm, I don't know how long I got over there one day. So I'm just walking. I don't know. I think I was just randomly walking. <laughs> that I was that dude. I, I I like randomly walking in New York, but. Especially my old neighborhood in the Bronx. You can't be a New Yorker and not walk, bro. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> that's one. That's one of the few things yeah, that I, I miss about New York. Movie. I miss walking. I miss. I miss walking in New York. Even even when I live in Orlando, I tried, but it's just it's something about Man, New York. It's something about New York. It's not. It's something about New York and walking around. Like I, I haven't found anything to replicate it. But getting back to the story, so I'm in, so I'm in the park, and then the bank teller runs up with me, and she has a kid. I'm like, and she tried to give me her number that day, and I was like, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, responsibility, hey, oh. <laughs> right, mind you, I'm 1920 at that time. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, exactly. oh. huh. I was like, oh, I was like, oh, think I said. I met up with like, oh, I see one of my friends. I gotta, I gotta go catch up with them. No. That's what I was like. Man, this elevator I said, is real. I don't, I, so... I don't. <laughs> Oh, nah. I had one. Nah. I'm not even going to front. I had one. Yeah, no, nah, I had to. I, I had to. I, no, trust me. I was Dude, like, I was like. Daddy at 19, oh, my gosh. I was 1920. I like, trust me. My mom would my mom would not have would, 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 would kill me messing with somebody with a kid. She would have killed hey, me. Hey, kids, your mama gave me a bowl of cereal. <laughs> <laughs> I need my one, mom. too. Where's my sippy cup? You got some fruit and pebbles? <laughs> <laughs> nah, see, we ain't cereal. We had no cereal in the house, so no, that one ain't work. Pebble so much, Jay. I need to know this. Hmm? You probably like that. You probably like that place in Vegas. I'm. I don't. We talk about TikTok. Have y'all followed like that serial killers bar TikTok? Oh yeah, I can't wait to go. <laughs> Can I wait to go? Killers bar. Yeah. 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 Bar oh, yeah that's fire. So, that's, that's fire. That's a great idea. Right. Like and they be uh, showing the people doing the cereal bowl sounds. I be dying. I'm like, no way you can beat that. No way. So oh, it's a it's a it's a place where you walk is nothing but cereal. Like all the cereals on the wall, you pick what you want, and they'll make anything out of it. You get milkshakes, you know, ice cream, and they have a challenge. I think it was a thing on a gallon buddy, and they fill up so much with whatever cereal you want, and you gotta finish it. And Dang. like yeah, I think a five dollar gift certificate and your food was free or whatever. But it is yeah. like I really want to go. As I'm trying not to, you know, express myself it, all over the. <laughs> <laughs> Only five people oh, beating the challenge. Only five people beating the challenge. That's an iron gut. Hey, so That's one of my homeboys from my own time is watch. What's up, Jumbo? <laughs> he told me he said, "What's up, y'all? What's up? What up? What up? What up? What up? All right, so jumping back real quick, real quick, real quick, just real quick, just a little bit, a little bit. Um, the the premise of masculinity. I guess here's my question: Do you think there's a problem with people judging masculinity as being toxic itself? Hmm. I think that was the next. That was the next part I wanted to go to. Hmm. I say no. I I would say no. no. I would say no. Okay. I can give a reason why, but everybody else can go. For, you know, everybody else can get there. Okay. Yes or no? Because okay. honestly, I say no because I think it's the way masculinity was always taught to us. I think masculinity is like a learned skill. Like femininity is also kind of a learned skill in a lot of ways. So it's just what we've been brought to be masculine. Or feminine, like like I said, I grew up it was just me, my mom, and my sister. A lot of my closest relatives were my aunts. Mm -hmm. I really didn't have a lot of males in my life, <laughs> a, a, not a lot. I had a male cousin, but that's cousins. You only gonna see them every now and again, mm -hmm. to be quite honest. But and just depends if my mom and her and her friends are getting together, or you know things like that. Even my next door neighbor probably um, that I grew up with in the Bronx is probably more of a father than me <laughs> than my own dad. I mean, like my dad did his own thing, but that if we were talking about breakups and relations, that's another story. I'm not going to get into that. But but I think masculinity is toxic because I think it's just the way we've been taught of what masculinity is. Honestly, I think masculinity and femininity are just. It's antiquated 
the best way I can say is is it's antiquated, like it's old. But I do believe there's like a masculine energy and a feminine energy. Don't get me wrong. I think those energies do exist. Or it's like a, okay. something that we can consider masculine and something we can consider feminine. I don't think we have words to replace those two terms, if that makes sense to mm-hmm. me. Okay. Because I, I didn't feel like I was an alpha male growing up. I always hated alpha males. They were trouble me nuts, jocks. And, like I said, but that's part of me just being going to an old boys high school and just having nothing but asshole jocks around. So mm-hmm. that could just be a personal preference. Like, even if I had a kid, I would not let them go to um, an all, all, all boys or if I had a daughter, I would not let them go to all girls school. I just feel like that sent you socially, but that's yeah. another topic for another day. Yeah, but, sure. but masculinity, I think it's just, we don't have a new word for it. What we want, not masculine to be, but what a man should be. It's like, we don't have the right word for it yet or the right attitude for it. Because I feel like some men, some men are probably more in tune with a, what we consider feminine I, I know for certain hand or Bible, I know more women that are probably more masculine than some of these males out here. I'm going to just keep it a buck 50. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I probably know some that's a buck 50. I know some some strong women that don't put up with no shit. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, I, I've been around that all my life. It's probably why I'm just a, just a probably what most of us consider abandoning. Like, oh, you've been around all these alpha females and shit. Like, and yep, and so what? Like, Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Mm-mm. Well, and it's, it's it's the assertiveness. Like I think that's really what it comes down to. Like what you're saying, uh, the there not being a proper wording for that type of energy on both exactly. sides, like the yin yeah. and yang. You know, essentially, mm-hmm. um, that counterbalance. Because I mean, the the domineering and all that stuff. I, you know, I, I kind of look at myself as kind of like a, a balance of of all of it as best as possible. You know, uh, I want to be artistic. I like creative. I understand what beauty is. I know what love is. I try to embody those things, but at the same time, I also know like you have to be strong to make it through certain situations. There are going to be things you're going to have to rise above and it's going to take a whole lot more power than a whole lot of hugging and kissing. You you're going to have to muscle down and do some things. And I think that's where that, that dividing line is, is where like, you know, we've talked about tonight, not having a way to express or, or talk about issues and things in your life where I think that's where the toxicity comes is that, it brews, it, it sits and, and festers mm-hmm. inside of us where, you know, like, like we were talking about earlier, the responses from some people and how they lash out or how we respond to situations like just instinctually, like, you know, it, it might be a minor nuisance to, to somebody else, but to somebody, it might just be a huge trigger and cause a big problem. So I, I think if, if you're wanting to go with like the, the standard old school terminology, I think the unhealthy part is the old school Eurocentric point of view of what man and woman are i mean we have to look also in our own history of like the the african diaspora the native american diaspora like how that whole thing played out because a lot of times the women in those cultures tended to be the ones that were running the towns and running the 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 havens while people were out hunter, hunting and gathering yeah so mm-hmm. we we have this false sense of what who what strength is and who's supposed to be strong because th- we are just yeah. strong on different levels what we what needs to happen like i don't have the patience to hang out with my beautiful kids all the damn time my wife seems to just be fine with it bring them in they can crawl around the bed like it's not you're just not a built-in thing just as a personal like i love my kids we have our time and then i also have my studio time and stuff where i'm working so her patience with that i can't do I, that is not a strength i have so i i embrace that about her and you know, she's runs that side, but you know, we're also looking at the other side of like, well, you got to go out, you got to do the tough jobs Are the tough jobs, just the man jobs. Can a man only do construction Is a man only right. allowed to be in the military Is a man. So, but then on, on the flip side, we have seen the argument where, okay, well, what is femininity and how, it, how can femininity be toxic or toxified? And we've mm-hmm. also seen that a lot in mm-hmm. our own communities as well, where it's overly, female centric and it abuses and belittles and puts down the men in our culture a lot. Like we we see that quite a bit too. Yeah. Can, I think that the, the concept of toxic masculinity is just because it's been around longer and it's been a problem on such a scale that it's also crossed racial lines and economic lines and everything else where masculinity has been this overbearing and enduring problem throughout mm-hmm. our history right now. And it's time for a transition. We need to counterbalance to that side we have to embrace some of our more emotional 
in order to be intelligent and to be fully formed and evolved people, we also have to take into account our emotions. We have to take into account our mental health as well as our physical health and come up with this balance of all of it. But like you said, not having the words for female or male, it's just the balance of both yin and yang, positive and negative, up and down, left and right. It's just the balance. Uh -huh. Back forth. So I'm, I got a question then. And again, this is just in, in the in the spirit of conversation. We might have an answer. You might. You just might. Mm -hmm. If we could come up with a term, a new term, to replace masculine and feminine. Because as we've been talking here, it seems that we've come to a particular point where we've, we're all kind of saying toxic masculinity brewed from the Eurocentric definition of masculinity. The old archetypes of what a man should, should not do, et cetera, et cetera. Same could be said for toxic femininity because that is a thing. True, 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 true. Mm -hmm. But then the question is, well, okay, if we take the toxic portion out of masculinity or femininity, and it's just being a man, right? What does it mean to be masculine? Hmm. Without being toxic. Without the toxicness, without the archaic rules that set them apart. What is masculinity? Because you can't say, well, toxic masculinity exists only because there are negative traits of masculinity. Okay, cool. Then what's masculinity? Mm -hmm. And yeah, are they inherently negative? Are they inherently the same? Oh, that's a tough one. I don't yeah. have an answer. <laughs> well, at least it's honest. It's an honest answer. No, no, no. I, I understand, but that, that's just the question that that came that came up in me. You know what I'm saying? Because I was, I, I went to look up. There's no definition for masculinity other than traits of a male. Right. But that well, brings what up are a whole traits of a thing? male. Right, like like you were saying, right? Like you and Nick were just saying. You know, you seen. We've all seen, quote unquote, alpha females. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? Or just sh very strong-willed women. Right? Mm -hmm. We've seen very strong-willed men. Yep. They act right. the exact same. Right. This one has a pain. Ooh. Ooh. Pretty baby. Hey, sis. The, the minute you came in, they started catcalling, even though they're talking about toxic masculinity. You see what happens? <laughs> you ruined right. it all. It wasn't me. Hey, lady. <laughs> it was me. Uh, the the guy say hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. Hello, Missy. Hello, 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 uh -oh. hello. Who else is popping her head in? Oh, that's my Katie. Ooh, we got the little oh, ones. We got the little ones. Too. What's up? What's up? What's hey. up? <laughs> All right, go on up. We're being we're talking grown man stuff. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have we'll have and a kid's anime like, oh, when she can jump on later. What kid anime borgo? Not for her. Before. I know you guys have got to school me so I, I can t I can teach them right. There you go. There you go. We gonna, we gonna make it work. If you, you need one before you, I put all that. She love Bo Fury. Yeah. She love. It. Oh, nice. Yeah. She's getting. Uh, she's been getting into animation. She's. Uh, she's what? She took one of our cameras and started doing stop motion stuff with her Legos. Oh, so that's I feel like awesome. Oh, animator. that's pretty good. Nice. Yep. Nice. Oh, that's pretty awesome. good. I'm a supporter of the arts up in this piece. Oh, of, course. Oh, of course. All day. That's all amazing. day. But. Um, but yeah, back so back to what we were saying mm -hmm. though. Like if if being an assertive individual is considered masculine, why? If being a because I okay, it's just what I've seen. The 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 archetype of a man or a male comes from the hunter gatherer syndrome. Mm -hmm. The men are hunters, the women are gatherers. There were men that were gatherers, though. But there, there were women that were great archers. Hunters. They were right, and there were some women that were great hunters. Mm -hmm. But the men were seen as less than men when they were gatherers versus the women 
who were great hunters were not seen as less than women. They right. were seen as greater than. So that's another dichotomy <laughs> that predates <laughs> everything. So why is it, uh, this is just adding another layer to that, why is it that the when a guy is a gatherer, it is considered negative, but when a woman is a hunter, it's considered a positive? Because society's stupid. Bingo. I'm sorry. I mean, the, people, uh, I just got are people are stupid. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you have a point. E I N G O. Bingo was his name. <laughs> he ain't lying. Real, Yo. I'm a gatherer. If I anybody can... needs a um a, a visual reference of what he just said, watch the movie Year One. Yes, yeah, yes, I was going to say that. But I, yes. that, that that's why I'm over here crying because he said it's I'm on point. Right. It's that's so true. true. Because legit, we're like, okay, I'm a gatherer. So I'll but, a, but, a, but again, that comes from a very Eurocentric point of view because in most tribal cultures and Native American cultures and also most cultures in Africa, like mm -hmm. a lot of those cultures believe that everybody had a job. Everybody's right. position was important and valuable to the tribe. Yep. If you weren't doing shit, that's when you got kicked out and called a punk. Right. It exactly. was just your your strength was in your ability to offer something to the tribe. Right. So, I mean, if you were an enter like a, a singer or a dancer, like it was respected because you were entertaining the right. tribe around the campfire. Right. If you were telling what a story, the storytellers were even heralded as as leaders and things. Right. So, like it's this. I, I hate to say it, but it really is a Eurocentric mindset because Next time. you can't do that in a village. You can't be yes. one in Billy Badass in a village because you still can't pick the grapes that are gonna, you know, make you're the rest gonna of use the wine. Make the rest of the meal. <laughs> right. Are you are you digging up the, the root vegetables? Nah, man, you're trekking across the shooting one arrow at an animal. You ain't doing shit. Are you digging? Right. Are you, no, like <laughs> it's again, it's it's accepting that all of us have a role to play. I think, and mm -hmm. you, like you said, what truly is masculinity? I think it's the ability. And, and it's not and honestly it's not a masculine trait that's why it's so terrible that we even have to try and define it this way there are some people that have strengths in being a dominant force a mm -hmm. uh, oprah winfrey if you i mean are you gonna call oprah masculine hell no yeah, yeah i mean you can't call oprah masculine right. because she has played some of the most influential female characters in history and been an influential f female but she but has a, a, but hold a personality and force to be right oh, did you not i got you i got you hold on i got you yeah but here's the thing in those thing in those things that she played in those people that she played mm -hmm. was the energy masculine energy or feminine energy because oh. what made those characters so great was not them sitting back which is quote unquote feminine industry it was energy it was the fact that they showed in massive amounts mm -hmm. masculine that energy is, yeah. and she yeah. portrayed that energy with such potency that gave the feminine aura that much more power. Well, but right. can we can we also think of a counter to that, which would be a male that was showing a more genteel, kind nature that would be a, like a nurturing example, especially in the minor in the minority category. Like, be like was the daddy's Alpha. girl. Well, oh, no. I love that movie. Daddy, 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 it's such a great movie. First but, of all, that is a good movie. It's a, it's a, it's a good beautiful movie. movie. <laughs> That's a great movie. Great movie. Daddy's little girls. First of all, Idris Elba can't do no wrong. Well, I mean, you even think of like something like John Q. Like, I mean, yeah. anytime oh, Denzel. Oh, oh, heartbreaking. Yeah, that, that's heartbreaking. John Q yeah. is heartbreaking. But but like for as genteel and stuff as he is, he's also trying to raise enough money. I mean, mm -hmm. I just I, I think like you said, like calling it masculine or feminine, I think does it a disservice. It is an energy mm -hmm. that is it's an energy. put out. Yeah. Because you can I still know. be dominant and try to take care of your family and love them and nurture them. I mean, exactly. we've seen that over and over again. Right. So exactly. It's a tough one. It I I agree. <laughs> I agree. I guess that's where can it just where that can, can these things just be defined as us being human? Right. And starting right. to break away from the norms. That's all it yeah, personalities. That makes sense. Yeah. Because then assholes can just be assholes. Well, it's like <laughs> I, I'm not. But you're always gonna have assholes. There's nothing you can do about that. I'm not weak for crying. You're a dick for making me cry. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, they, let, but let, that's now they can be. They can be cold 
mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like you mm -hmm. can put them in a in a corner now. They're not they're not just being oh I'm a man. Right. No, you're being a dick. You're just a, you're just <laughs> an <laughs> asshole, man. Right. Like go talk to a therapist, get yourself a hug, and find somebody right. that loves go, you. Damn it. Like you said exactly. <laughs> Both gonna love those who hate who hate themselves. You can't who hate themselves. And that's where I think a lot of the, the 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 masculinity stuff really comes from. Is like it's almost like I wish I could like say that flower was beautiful, but damn it, I gotta lock it down inside so far so nobody right. sees that I think it's beautiful. But man, it's um, purple and it's beautiful. It's my favorite color. It was a beautiful ass flower, though. Tangled. You all have seen that movie, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh hell yeah! Nope. I, two girls, I haven't. Right? You uh, haven't. Does Kingdom Hearts three count? Does Kingdom Hearts three count? That's the only. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. But in the movie, there's a there's a song sequence where she's in the bar with all the bar all the ruffians and stuff, and Ooh. everybody's talking about their dream. That's oh, yeah. what you're talking about right there. That mm -hmm. that moment you're talking about where oh it's a flower. Dude has one hand with a hook. He wants to be a concert pianist. Like yeah. he's talking about that was his dream. And the boy was bad on the keys. Yeah. He, like, was, mm -hmm. he, he was though. He was, was the other thing, dude man. wanted to he wanted to crochet. <laughs> yeah. The big dude, right. big, like big, like big Norse god looking Thor dude. He yep. he collected little unicorns, ceramic unicorns mm -hmm. and stuff like the most gentle thing in the world was big dude. It's it's stuff like that, like that they can't. Because they're in that environment, they feel like they cannot be themselves. We cannot be ourselves, and that should not be the case. Uh, one of my favorite things around the house, my uh, this is going to sound absolutely crazy, and you can all just go to hell because I love it. Um, <laughs> I, uh, especially my theater background, uh, we used to get flowers. Where, you know, whenever you do your shows, you get mm -hmm. flowers. So one of the things I actually like, my wife still gets me flowers every once in a while. I mean, I get her, I surprise her with flowers and stuff too. Like it's a two way street. Dude, but it's definitely. it's a it's a reminder of where we came from in our theater days and stuff. So like I've always mm -hmm. liked getting flowers. Just you know, like if you're doing a good job, somebody's going to give you your flowers. I always you know had that mentality. So I, that's one of the it's a, a positive sign. But like I said, you know, appreciating beauty and appreciating art, I don't feel like makes us less of a being. I feel like it rounds us out as people. Because I mean, mm -hmm. you can only appreciate the beauty when you've actually seen the darkness. Art is the greatest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. This man. What, what what did I used to right? say all the time? Um, I don't know. Perception is the key to your reality. Mm -hmm. okay. There are multifacets to every person's perspective, though. Mm -hmm. I've never heard you say that. <laughs> this is some older stuff. It's new to me. I think he was working my on his man, first book. My man said, what did I used to say all the time? Oh, you ain't never heard me say that? I don't remember that, bro. I don't remember that one. I just got We're playing the dozens on here tonight. Lunch. I'm not going to cap you, man. That's new. <laughs> but, yeah, like, that's the thing. Your perception makes your reality. And if you can't perceive beauty, if you can't perceive, or even worse, if you can perceive beauty but feel like you can't express it, how much I more. Like moderacy. How much more sure. painful is that? Yeah. And not being able to see beauty at all. And who else are you lashing out at? Right. Oh, man. You're going to lash out at the people who can see and express. Big facts. That's big facts. No lie there. And like, this is okay, this might sound crazy, but I think that's one reason why the LGBTQA, IA, I believe, uh, group gets as much flack as they do at times and I think that's why a lot of the minority cultures especially African Americans get a lot of flack from individuals as well is because both of those groups have one thing in common they know who they are for the most part or they're willing to express themselves in ways that other people feel that they cannot even if they can see the beauty in themselves, they can not express it the same way. Mm -hmm. And so because you're unable to express how you feel about life or about the beauty of another man or another woman or whatever the case may be, you are now mad at them and you're lashing out at the person who's able to actually express it when you cannot. Yep. Mm. I mean, they be doing too much, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just being okay. real, bro. Like, I get it. You know, you're oppressed. Or whatever, but you're not the only people oppressed, and black people ain't out here like, oh, you said this, so now your whole life, bro. Like, 
they out here ruining people's lives, bro, because people don't agree with the way they live, bro. Well, I think that's also some some of that toxic side too. Yeah, is like where we're 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 kind of coming at each other wrong. If we could realize right. that we could stop well, coming at each other, I like get, that. you know what I mean. You're supposed to live, be able to live your life, but because yeah. somebody doesn't agree with the way that you live your life, that doesn't mean that you should they whole life up. Bro. So now I'm gonna go here. I'm mm. gonna go here, and. <laughs> If you were to come after me or mine in any capacity, one thing that I will say, no matter who you are, I will end your lineage. If and, and if I'm serious about like you come, you've come after my family, you've come after my kids, you've come after me. When it, when in any capacity, I will tell someone I will end your lineage and mean it wholeheartedly. True, that's cold. Because yeah. at that yeah. point you've you've now crossed a line into something that is dear to me. And if you were to tell me that, oh well, you don't know who you are. I'm sorry, Negro, who who is you again? Man, people How talk you gonna tell me who I is. You you, I mean, I'm just being honest. It, as as me, if someone were to tell me I don't know who I am, you gonna get every clap back in the book. All the yo mamas, and, and it's like, and like Nick was saying, and I'm I'm not disagreeing with anything either of you saying right now, but I'm just saying that, like Nick was saying that, if if it's coming, if the attack comes in a toxic way, sometimes the only way to respond is in a toxic manner, mm. because the toxic person, the initial attack, may not understand it if you don't. Two negatives don't make a positive. Mother. They don't. But yeah, but the, but if, the clap back can change behavior, right? Yep. Like if I if I say if 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 someone comes negatively to you, right, or in a complete toxic, completely toxic way, you can be nice and say, "Oh well, you know, this, this shouldn't be how it is." Blah blah blah. Fight the power, peace and love, and all that jazz. It can be done that way. You may not get the reaction you want at that moment, though. You may not get them to stop at that moment. And unfortunately, it's because the toxicity. And I'm going to stop using toxic masculinity or femininity. I'm just going to use toxic in general because the toxic energies, the toxic actions, not the energies, the energies aren't toxic. The actions are toxic because the toxic actions continue to be perpetrated on both sides of the train tracks. Nothing's getting accomplished. That's right, and and I think mm -hmm. it's because it's 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 so ingrained. Like y'all, like all of you have said at some point, it's ingrained in our society. Right, right. The entire society needs a complete overhaul. At least an open discussion on how we're going to approach these things, because we have generations right. of children that are having identity issues at younger and younger ages. Mm -hmm. And we just, I, I don't want anybody to hurt. Like it's unnecessary for anybody to hurt whatever. I mean, everybody's going through a lot of crazy things and to not be able to be who you are, seems like it would be the worst thing ever, especially having, I've had friends that have, you know, come out at not when, when I knew them, like getting to hang out with them in high school, they come out much later and you're come to find out like, well, why didn't you just tell me when you were, when you were dealing with this, as opposed to like hiding it. Cause you feel like, like, your life would have been better. You wouldn't have been as sad during this period of time if you just would have mm. opened up about some stuff. And a lot of it that we end up seeing comes from like how society is going to treat these people, like mm. how they just anticipate what the response is going to be. So right off rip, they're instantly, you know, they're going to recoil, pull themselves back. And then also, like you said, lash out, lash out uncontrollably sometimes because of their reaction. But we also look at the side where like um, Charlemagne said it best, you know, you can't be re responsible for how someone else is going to react to what you say. Big like, facts. You, say you, the you, thing. Not you, a few people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot be held responsible for how people respond to the things that you say. Mm -hmm. And that that's the, the, what is it? The first amendment. When they talk about the first amendment, it's like, well, you can say whatever you want, but you might get jacked in the jaw. You don't know. Like it, it they'll, they'll take a felony for it. Some people will stand up for their beliefs that hard. So the big thing that we have to consider is, 
like, yeah, I don't, I don't want anybody to come back and end somebody's career, but if you feel big enough about it and you're that mad about it and you've been hurt by enough people and this is your last stand, well, I mean, somebody's career might end up going down because you're speaking your truth. Look, this is all I'm saying. This is all I'm saying, right? If you're going to fight for equality, then be equal. You can't get mad when somebody's sucking dick in the parking lot and then the next person like, well, I ain't sucking dick in the parking lot. But then when it's heterosexual people sucking dick in the parking lot, it ain't shit. Like, I'm just saying. If, well, I'm gonna, this nigga, the baby, made a comment about somebody sucking dick in the parking lot towards the LBTQI ABC community. And now he ain't got no career. Well, and it's it's also and like you're, you know you're, how much I could name you several people who were sucking dick in the park. I got my dick sucking in the park a lot, several times. Okay, okay, own it, okay. own it, own it. Okay, I went into that out loud. I went into that out loud, but hey, do you? I said I, I got it, so I didn't say I was sucking dick in the park a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> but my point is though, like. And it was out here like, oh, she sucked his dick in a awful lot. Yo, end that bitch. We're like, now this nigga, now all of a sudden, because somebody getting their dick sucked in a parking lot, it's this, this nigga whole life up. We're like, no, that's not how it works. Well, and he was like, work, I, I'm not trying, like, I don't want to defend like the, the words, but like, like we've all been to clubs where they do the crazy ass shout outs from the stage and how like, you know, we, we know what he was doing. We know what was happening. It was just, unfortunately, it wasn't in inside of a grimy club in NY. It was at like <laughs> Rolling Loud or something really huge where there were people that could easily be offended and a large group of them simultaneously filming it. So it's kind of like, uh, like you want to say, hey, you probably shouldn't say this in public. Uh, you can have your beliefs. That's awesome. And you can also share your beliefs, but you also can't like not... Oh, damn, it's so hard with the the response because you you don't want someone to be canceled outright for something that was innocuous, but you also have to take into account that some of this stuff was built into our society, so it's not as innocuous as we'd like to think. I can see that, but also I, I if you think about it this way as well, it's just certain people you don't mess with, but at the same time, and this happens, toxic masculinity or not, people just don't know how to read the room. <laughs> Let, let's be honest. Yeah. Let's be honest here. People that's don't read the rules because think about a lot of people. I got canceled. The baby, he got canceled. Okay, he got canceled. Okay, we're not, not condoning him, not defending the man or anything like that. But just read the room. Like you feel like you're in the wrong, or you feel like I. And it's funny. I just had this thought like two weeks ago. I was like, if you're in an argument with somebody, or you're in a disagreement with somebody, and you feel like you're starting to sound like Riley from the Boondocks, I think you lost your argument. Yeah, right. Yeah, they don't rally. Hate to say Riley, but he, he it has to be Riley. But I, yeah, but I I feel like that you know cancel culture. I mean LGBT. I mean they're they're just more out and about right now than when you're a minority in the L, in in that particular community. You already got two strikes on you, so they're probably more hyper defensive because right. they already got two strikes. No matter what you do. Here's my question. Here's my only question regarding cancel culture if we're if if whoever deems this cancelable right can make that much that many waves why are they so racist that's what i'm saying bro if you're gonna cancel something cancel the niggas who had us in chains for 400 cancel mm, mm -hmm. right cancel sunset town cancel this political society so what? A, a president. Cancel student debt. Cancel student debt. There we go. You know what I'm saying? Like, cancel the credit card systems. Cancel all. Cancel the education system. Oh yeah, big clean like, up there. Yeah. If you really are going to, if you're going to use this power that you have, and again, this is not. Use I it mean, for, I think the baby was stupid for doing what he did in the first mm -hmm. place. Again, one read the room. Read the room. <laughs> Two, like, read yes, the room. to what vocab said, there are many people who have had that happen and got shouted out from the stage, and it wasn't an issue. 
this right. particular like, person just happened to have be, if, a chip on their shoulder at that point in time. If you're doing it, then be and, and be mad that it's a god doing. Both react. However, like, oh well, this one. Yo, but we got I, another one in the building. Oh yeah, the what mustache up? wanted to come hey. in and see what I was doing in here. See? But we got oh, wait, oh, you jumping in. <laughs> what up? What up? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it later. You know, you're a masculine male. You probably need to learn some of this stuff. <laughs> Love you guys. They're not used to me actually talking to other humans in here. Usually, I'm just talking to myself. Like, oh, you're actually doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, that and production work and voiceover stuff. So I'm usually just talking into a blank screen of like right. wavelengths and everything. Man. Man. But yeah, I mean, overall, there's a lot. We we know there's a lot that our society has been fighting. Correction. Has been fighting and should have been fighting harder in certain ways. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> over the years, I do agree. Kind of recapping some of the things that we've talked about, I do agree that the millennial generation will be the one who has the ability to make a large change in how this country works moving forward and the world and in, in all of in all um i worry about the generation after us mm. though because tiktok <laughs> if you're worried about shit just watch tiktok right um there are some good people in it i know there are because we got kids but <laughs> <Whew>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've seen some of their um, classmates. They're not they're all right. rocket Check scientists. Classmates. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that I, I think overall, I guess I I feel that what we were able to come to is that masculine and feminine energy is technically what we need to be looking at in general, and even with that, what is because you can't. You can't use the terms masculine and feminine without having a definition for masculine and feminine. And the problem is the the Eurocentric toxicity of masculinity and femininity is what gave the definition to masculine and feminine. Therefore, we technically have no definition for the words masculine and feminine. I mean... If you really want to get into the biological definition, I think that's probably really the only the limitation. Only way. And even then, yeah. if you try to define it that way, then you have people that are completely upset with the uh, uh, Chappelle response to like right. not necessarily traditional gender roles, but the traditional definitions of what masculine and feminine is. That's where we're kind of running into this roadblock in our generation of trying to explain this why are people feeling so dispossessed from their own beings? Well, I feel like partially we're not living the lives we really want to be living, which is why we're so dissatisfied with what we're doing now. True. So it could just be a general dissatisfaction that we're kind of running into on a generational or uh, civilization front where on the whole, we don't know how to define any of this stuff anymore because all this stuff is trash. Like if you look at our history, yep. just so much of it is just lies and garbage. And now we're kind of coming to this awakening like, well, how the hell do we define this? Like what really matters as far as uh, masculine and feminine roles? Do these gender roles even need to exist? I mean, aside from just pro simple procreation definitions, like are these relevant now? And I don't I don't know if we're ready to transition into that kind of world because then we're getting into a lot of other questions. Like it's one of those you know Pandora's boxes that we just keep unraveling another problem. And that's the, yeah, that is the problem. Yeah. Makes sense. That yeah. is Makes the problem. Sense. So, man, what a good combo tonight, guys! Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> you to be on the show. Fun. I'm glad you're able to I come on. <laughs> so deep, we're getting so philosophical. <laughs> so, yeah. I got two last questions, and then <laughs> we'll wrap. It. We'll start wrapping things up. All right. One is up. one of my favorite anime is so <sighs> right. So at the beginning of every episode, it says. A sound mind dwells in a sound. A sound soul dwells in a sound mind and a sound body. Soul eater. Soul eater. Mm -hmm. Soul eater. Mm -hmm. I'm pulling it up now. Over I'm getting all my list ready. 
Oh, don't worry about it. We'll send you a list. Or you could tell we be watching and <laughs> we might have read a quote and we, we oh yeah, yeah, it's only shall <laughs> prevail. Right, right. Yeah, sound soul dwells within a, within a sound mind and a sound body. I had to make sure I read it right. right. That right. quote is at the beginning of every episode of Soul Eater. That's how every episode starts. Now, what you just said, Nick, about getting to the point of what energy is what. A soul has to be within the body. It doesn't have to be, you know what I'm saying, as, as we're living. Sound soul, sound mind, sound body. If none of us are, as you're saying, under like knowing where we are, if we're feeling that we need to redefine everything, would you say the soul of this country is no longer sound? Oh gosh, it's been blackened for a real long time. I mean, I've seen it from the barrel of a Rolled gun, it. so I can tell you firsthand how stupid this country can be sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it so much on display. It's so much just ripped open, just bare, blank, and naked with mm-hmm. the last four years of seeing where we're at and what we all believe. And like, like I, I, I'm, I'm a, a more progressive soul. I'm, I'm an independent voter, I, but it's not in a creepy way. It's more because like I tend to be more on the progressive side. I want things to move forward. I want, I, I'm mm-hmm. waiting for my damn hoverboard. That's I tell my, I explain right? this to everybody. My, my philosophy is if we don't have hoverboards by now, we are coming up short. What are we doing wrong? We're we focused too much on religion. Out. Exactly, we should have done that. Future said what 2021 2015? Yeah, Yeah, a simple jet. Who's sick of getting stuck in traffic? We haven't come up with a better idea. Well, like gas, we haven't come up with a better idea than gas. We haven't come up with a better idea. Like, it's all this old, antiquated shit we just keep having to shovel through. And it comes even into our economics, it comes into our politics, it comes into our own homes a lot of times, being streamed in through television shows that show us this arcane point of view of what the hell a family's supposed to be. I mean. I don't know about all y'all, but I didn't grow up in a normal nuclear family with 2.5 kids and a nice Don running. You know, he's my dad right. and my parents. Fuck all that. I didn't, yeah. I didn't see not a nary shit of one nope. of them. My mom was a white picket fence? No, no. Nah, hell no, nah, man. I barely <laughs> had no. a fucking meal some nights. You're right. So, th- so the reality is like. Oh, milk man if, coming by every week. Yeah, exactly. You're going to ride through that perfect white picket fence with rose bushes and Barbara's <laughs> coming out with her uh, ambrosia salad. <laughs> Shit, New Jack City and Payton Pool was my childhood. Shit, that was my era. That's what I'm saying. So, like, (laughs) it's all it's it's exactly. Listen, we can't do the potato salad. They put raisins in that shit. See, Uh, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. (laughs) We're not doing that. Nope. So, so like, we're. I don't like potato salad. I know don't do you don't do that. Yeah, well, so like we're looking at this cha- this generational transition where like the, you know the hippies didn't do shit they were they protested wars and stuff didn't do a goddamn thing ended up being the same dumbass yuppie snorting coke in the eighties yeah. and then we had uh, all of these different you know we had we've had marches we've had fights for freedom it's like listen we're at the point now where we just need to come together and say whatever the hell with differences and stuff we really have how important is it to live in a better life having a better quality of life do we need to keep paying for more wars do we need to keep funding like why is healthcare not free in this country at this point so like we we know from a long standpoint that the soul of this country has been completely off if we're not even providing for the least of us we got a real problem so yeah, this, exactly. this country had no soul. Period. Let's be, let's keep it a buck fifty. United right. States has never been anything more than just Eurocentric people mad at religious beliefs came over here to find a country, yep. slaughter slaughter people, continue their slaughtering, went back, tried to do some other things, became a world superpower by pure accident because Europeans went to war two times. Yeah. Let's let's keep it a buck. We should have probably been bombarded by now. Let's keep let's keep that a buck. But honestly, this country has never had a soul because we never really had an identity. See, and that's, uh, we like, never I, had a culture. We never had anything. But I think uh, that's what what I think that's what the difference is. I think we we've missed the the potential benefit of this nation. And like as a, as a soldier, I, I love my country. It's not a, any any of that bullshit rah rah America bullshit patriotism nonsense. It's from a very practical sense. Like we are better together, working together, coming up with better 
ideas than we would have been apart. So the philosophy, the idea that this nation has, it's it's like uh, MLK. I have a dream. Like there is a fantastic idea in there if we can just get to it. If for a couple of minutes we can actually try to inspire one another to try and push a little bit farther forward, I, I think we'd be on a much better track. That's, I mean, I, I agree with you 100%. We have, we have a dark, dirty, dank, history written by shitty people. I, I look at it similarly to the Bible. It was written by human beings, so it's fallible and flawed, but the idea and the theory is sound. We should be working okay. as best as we okay. possibly can through these allegories and stories from our history and trying to make it better. And we know for a fact that fighting amongst each other and not recognizing the, the differences in one another doesn't work. Like, we can't just be like, oh, we're all American. It doesn't matter. Nah, that's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> what makes us awesome is that we are all different. We all have something to add to this tapestry. And I think, mm -hmm. especially when we're wor working in this energy, it's like the ebb and flow of even the nation hat. Like, we just need a reboot. Like, if there was a thing that we could do with a nation right now, can we do a reboot? Just a right. hard reset, let this mug. Hey. Listen. Oh, like that. that Yo. That's right. Somebody pull the plug. So put in a race or something. I'm finna show y'all something. Y'all <laughs> right. on a cartridge. <laughs> when was the last time that you think that America itself was in unison? Mm. Was there reconstruction? Wrong? Probably. I think Wait, reconstruction. Okay, no, it, it, was, it was one time. It was one time I know for a fact. After 9/11. No. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, but, happened. But we also had another it was, enemy. It wasn't anything positive. It was reason. something extremely negative. Like that, and it also reason. put all of our our Middle Eastern and Arabic brothers and sisters. Like it set them back probably a good hundred yeah, years. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Was we really all together? Because I know a lot of Muslim people who live here and got trampled. Shit, on. got absolute shit. Right. So like, I mean, yeah. I see that we were. Together. I was in New York at the club. It was a mess. Yeah. The Muslims, yeah. the corner stores. I mean. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ryan, 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 Ryan. Born and raised here. But, but, without, without the point I was bringing up, I feel like it's going to have to be something drastic to happen mm -hmm. for us to, to finally get over that hump and actually be a united country. I'm oh, a, yeah. I'm a, I'm a real. Said, I said all the time, united, it's going I'm, to take aliens. Mm -hmm. It's going to take aliens. I'm going to reach into my nerd bag. Uh, <laughs> Star Trek. Uh, first Hello. contact the concept the Borg. the Borg was the whole reason uh, don't come my way <laughs> <laughs> so like i mean that's what it like that's what got us to the warp drive in that storyline was that like there was a huge catastrophe world war three happened wiped out a huge chunk of the country some industrious people that had nothing else to live for were just starting to work on whatever they knew from their previous life so essentially they developed a, a warp drive that gave them faster than light technology which brought in aliens and started the whole conversation of first contact. And that's what I feel like. I, 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 I'm one of those people that agree with that theory is that I thought the pandemic was actually going to bring us closer together because, well, we were stranded. We're all stranded at home. Unfortunately, the exact opposite happened. Everybody realized how fucked they were getting and how terrible their mm -hmm. jobs were and how bad racism had gotten and how out of control their family members had gotten in some of these respects. And yep. it was a real big awakening. So, I, you know, if there was ever a time for a reboot, I would hope like this next election, we could start like putting some people in place that actually have some real ideas and are really motivated to do something. I'm not a big fan of politicians, but we got to start somewhere. And that's right now the only avenue we have is trying to keep that stuff clean. So what I would right. suggest, and I, I completely agree with the reboot. However, um, and I, I think I talked to you about this, Nick, before the storyline about owning the island and mm. having everybody go to that island mm -hmm. and just start a country on that island but a similar situation like i'm i'm all for like a black wall street see and but like not black. and it sounds like you're talking about animal crossing but continue. well i was i was going to say like <laughs> on the flip side though like we also look at things like what a lot of right wing people tend to look at and it's the Ayn rand uh, atlas shrugged concept if you guys yeah. don't know what that is it's the bs where like we take all of our talent and then we just leave you guys here with the scraps like elysium uh remember yeah. that movie where elysium yeah 
um mm. it's a similar concept where like well we just take all of our talents like I, I mean i would love to just go to an island where i don't have to worry about the color of my skin it would be fantastic but also yeah. the reality oh, is so i want my country where i was born and raised to respect me as though i fucking belong here every day and takes care of me like we're the richest country in the world as opposed to being living in squalor or right. being treated as though i'm less than i think i would love like who who makes okay. the most money? Like what? Who's what do they say? He like the person, the richest person in the U.S. Oh, jeez. Uh, Hold on, let me see. Bezos. Think, yeah, I Bezos. Yeah. I thought you right now it. is worth one point uh, one hundred seventy seven billion dollars. Right. And that's after a divorce where he lost half his shit. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Half mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. Number of people in the U.S. right now is three. Hundred twenty nine point five million. Kind of hard to put it in perspective, but you could almost give everybody a million dollars, and nobody'd ever have to think twice about right. it. And it wouldn't even hit your bottom line, right? You give so everybody a million dollars for fun. With with all the people that are are millionaires or billionaires or anything else like that, why hasn't that been done? If they're really worried about America being great, why? Is that been done? It would upset the economy. But would they, it? Well, they're, but would they're, it? from their perspective, uh, from economic numbers, from what I, I, I'm, I'm a nerd, so I study a lot of really random shit. Um, the way it's perceived is that if they infuse that, there would be no one that would take credit, which means the credit industry would shut down. Uh, you would lose probably a number of uh, ongoing loans and mortgages would get paid off. So banks would start collapse all over the place. Like they don't like when they're thinking of their money, they are literally thinking of only their money. They give two shits about the, the lowly peon that shines their shoes. And as sad as that is, I get the that. only way we could do that is through legislation, which then taxation would actually bring that money back into the communities. But unfortunately not into the pockets of the people that fucking need it. So they're going to find a way to F us out of it no matter what. True. But I mean, uh, even if even if everything got paid through, we owe how many countries, how many trillions of dollars? Yeah. Especially so if we China. if we did pay everyone off, if they were able to give the people the money, the people are going to put it back into the economy. Period. Mm. We we that's what we do. Unfortunately, no, yeah. most of us are not. People are stupid. Individuals are intelligent. <laughs> I say that all 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 the time. Group mentality. And, but, yeah. We will herd mentality exactly. Mm -hmm. They will continue to buy. Unfortunately, our people, Nike stock will go up. Uh, I mean, you you know where the money's gonna go automatically. I don't know. Uh, okay, so I don't know if you guys follow like Earn Your Leisure or uh, Black Wall Street on Instagram or mm -hmm. YouTube or anything. Like, I feel like our our complete economic uh, education is starting to come around a little bit where people are starting to get to a point where invest people are starting to be more investing and mm -hmm. a little bit more shrewd with where they're putting their money. They're getting involved in stocks and crypto and NFTs and ETFs and the whole nine yards. And like, I feel like if it were to be given now, or if they did the equivalent of like the 40 acres and a mule payout or something like that, right. like conceptually, I think we'd be in a different place. I think people would be surprised at how, uh, entrepreneurial and educated we would be with our money. It's just we've never fucking had it. Like, True. pull up by your bootstraps. Well, motherfucker, I never had any bootstraps. <laughs> like, I, I don't even know what boots look like. Fuck you. So I, I, I definitely see the, the idealistic point of view. I just know that the pushback is always something oh, so yeah. much more sinister. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess Vocab did the math for us. He said Bezos would be able to give everybody in the U.S. 451. But that's okay. everybody, including the homeless people. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> that's at least a room for a night. Hot meal. Right. Shower. Yes, sir. It, job interview. <laughs> It'll get them to the job interview to get a job. Well, right? That's what I'm, I'm really hoping that we start seeing more investment in uh like tech, especially in some of these cities where, you know, like Indian Indianapolis is one of those places where like yeah. agriculture is what surrounds us. But like there's plenty of stuff that could be done here that would e economically that would benefit so many people. So, I mean, I, I'm not sure. Like I, I, I know in like St. Louis and stuff, they've been trying to make some bigger projects for like the uh, uh, tech community and stuff like that. But yeah. we haven't seen we the got a investment large in St. Louis. Right. Especially with the minority community, though, the investment has been small because our buy in is small. 
right the, the, hopefully we're starting to start shift the, the the powers that be and start moving ourselves into a more advantageous position at least to start opening up some pathways for some things that we that aren't in our communities like one of the things we always run into is like transportation to get to a new job well if you could just work for home for a tech company or do coding or something shit people's lives would change overnight with a steady paycheck doing some coding work for a company or something but those opportunities just have to be open to people that you know have a little bit of tan yeah yeah all right well one last thing and i think this is probably our second most important question that we've had all night regarding this topic oh, and we've talked about a lot of stuff <laughs> Why do you think men's health is undervalued and underdiagnosed? Because mm. men are undervalued. Male ego. Oh, that's another good one. Mm. Okay. The invulnerable male, huh? Yeah, it goes in with their top skin. Mm -hmm. That false tough. Yep, that false tough. Uh -huh. Or the need to be tough. Oh, man. It's ridiculous. Ah, oh, man. They never tell us that these are the things we're going to have to deal with at some point. Right. Yeah. You just got to figure it out on your own. That's... Hey, you might want to eat a salad every once in a while. Well, yes. you know, I've only been fed Takis since I was coming out of diapers because that's all that was available in the food desert that was my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of stuff. I, I it's so hard with, especially with health, you know, how do, how do we overcome that with education as opposed to Here, the... I'm going to let y'all talk. I'll be right back. Okay. Word. This your problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's ours. Yeah. It's like, uh, now we own it. Yep. Well, uh, Hey, it's been uh nice getting a chance to know you guys and meet you guys. Uh, I don't think I've ever run into you guys out in public before, but uh, hi, my name's Nick. I, up, I'm glad to meet all y'all. What up? What up? Thanks for hey, talking yo, with me tonight. Nick. I feel like a human. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, it's, I'm oh, not standing around saying, no, say, don't do that. Don't touch that. Quit hitting your sister. Go into your room. Clean up your stuff. Like, it's just yeah. nice not to say that stuff for a while. That's, that's what I was uh, going to say earlier. I, like, I hope everybody can throw their extrovert friends <laughs> during the pandemic. <laughs> nope. Like, bro. One of my Listen, friends I had like a breakdown. I'm not supposed to go to a party after this. And they was like, why are you not going? I'm like, because I don't like people. <laughs> <laughs> I got real bad with people, uh, especially trying to deal with, you know, keeping the kids healthy and trying to get them educated right. through uh, school, like the virtual school and stuff. Oh, my gosh, man. I don't uh, I was not built to do the online tutoring for kids. I love them. But damn but that, I mean, that was the funny thing is like, I, I'm realizing now that I have to learn how to redo this kind of stuff, like have these conversations with people. And it, because, you know, you don't see people like that, like you used to you go out to the you know, clubs, you hit it up, you go out to your you know business meetings and stuff, chop it up for a little bit. It's like, I can barely get through the map. <laughs> right. Nice talking to you too. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Not quite the same. Yeah. I've been feeling for the uh, music venues around the area. I've been trying to find some different projects. Uh, I do some prom like promotional work and I do some advertising and interview stuff for like up and coming artists and bands and stuff. And just trying to find out where the scene has gone over the last couple of years with all the bars and, and nightlife kind of dying and closing. I didn't realize like there were 20 or some clubs that used to be in the area completely shut down. Yeah. The sad thing is a lot of places are probably not going to come back either. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Like Bella yeah. got, like I'm surprised people are still going to sports and sporting events right now. I'm like, yeah, wow, bro, that that's never gonna go mm -hmm. away. I'm sorry, it's true. Like, it have to be something that we see because what's gonna happen is if it do go away, it's gonna go from sporting events that we know to esports, which is coming up yep. really really fast. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. They're oh, yeah. big investments in that. It's coming. Like I wouldn't mind having an esports scene, but I don't know. It just seems like it's not. Person of color focus, unfortunately, at least my own. Uh, you honestly, seen the two they've had a, worst teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, like a, a, a with the new Halo coming out, we could definitely start a squad. 
Yeah. Hey, we've been trying to look at to do a Pokemon Hold Unite. On, wait, but... wait. It is, it's certain people in here that don't mess with Xbox. Damn right. Uh, I, I got I got a PS5 right next to it. I got a PS5 right next to it. Uh, I let's see. I, just, I was telling I was this. I was telling Panda about playing the new Guardians game. I don't know if you guys have checked that out. It's actually, I was really impressed with that thing. Yeah. So I do want to find a game that we all can play together. Facts. I mean, mm-hmm. there's supposed to be new stuff coming out that's cross platform. So mm-hmm. hopefully oh, that. Yeah. Happens and then we can, you know, get it popping. I know a game. It's a game called Knockout City that's cross platform. Ah, uh, yeah, I've seen it's some a, of the things about Knockout game. City. I thought oh, it was yeah. Really yeah. Cool. yeah, it looks okay. Well, Among Us, but I don't like that. That game just looks weird. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I cut somebody off. I saw him in the street next time. I'm like, wait, you were. Oh. Like, that's just me. Well, I've been this guy. We should we him fill up his list. Oh, he's back now. <laughs> no, whatever. <laughs> welcome anyway, to you. welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome All right. Back. Well, we hit pretty much everything that I had. Um. Oh, one other easy. thing, real quick. Whew, out of breath. Sorry, I had to run. Okay. Speaking of man's health. Right. Right. <laughs> Facts. Put stuff together, panda. <laughs> Take I my know, fat ass I out know. for a walk tomorrow. Saw that bamboo. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy remake that they came out with. Oh, yeah. It's coming was... to PC. Uh, it's going to be nice. exclusive on I'm Epic playing. Games. So just as an FYI. I got it. For PS4. Yeah, I, yeah, I like I that. I have it on yeah. PS. I might grab it. I might go ahead and cop it on the, place, on the uh, PC just in case, though. So. Man. All right. Well. Does anybody have anything they want to throw out there? I Just do. In general, I do. I got something. I got something. Go for oh, it. You go first. All right. Well, I've been catching up on something new on Netflix. Not sure if y'all got Discovery Plus. There's a show out there called Soul Food Cookdown. Kind of like think of like the cooking shows, but it's all soul food focused. Yeah. Just started on Discovery okay. Plus. Uh, nice. I watch cooking shows, but that's not Yeah, so do I. Yeah, so, do I. Yeah, so Discovery Plus. Um, soul food showdown is all about soul food. All this is just black, black cooks, pretty good. If you watch Master Chef, the season ten one, and Dorian's one of the contestants on there. Nice. Nice. Hey, she is kicking ass. She is just kicking it. ass. Dorian throw down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's something to check out. Like Zone Discovery Plus, new episodes come out every Saturday. Just on episode four, just dropped. Today, actually, me and my girl watched it nice. this morning, nice. which is pretty good. I'm trying to think what else out there. Well, we got Spider Man coming out next week, so that's coming up. True. I'm not seeing it till Sunday, so I'm no I, spoilers. I, <laughs> y'all start talking. Y'all that, talking about it that, Saturday. I'm out. I'm not gonna be here next week. I'll be tell you right now. Would never hear me say this is the first time I'm gonna say it. No spoilers. I, I really like that man. franchise. They've done a really good job with that. I'm really looking forward to this <laughs> yeah. next one. Yeah. So, uh, you can go next vocab. I just oh, found a funny something? little thing on Facebook. Kind of, sort of. So, I'm on fi- I'm scrolling through Facebook. I was sharing the on stream to everybody. Mm. And somebody, there was an argument talking about fillers in anime. I know mm-hmm. we had the conversation before. They kind of broke it down to percentage. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, I think I've seen it so, too. Okay, so they got Bleach, 366 episodes, 82 fillers, equals 22% filler, 78% canon, right? Yep. Yeah, nice. yeah. Naruto, 766 episodes, 321 yep. filler, <laughs> Naruto, 41% filler. Yeah. 59% canny. Bless baby. And then they got the goat of longevity. One, one piece. piece. Let's go. Uh, one piece. 1,002 one. episodes. 94 filler episodes. Yep. Thank you. 9% he out here. filler. 91% canny. Thank and you. Out of that filler, like <laughs> 70 of those episodes are in Sanji's arc. <laughs> wow. They are not. <laughs> hey, like 50. <laughs> 
Yeah, but Naruto, I mean, a lot of that was good background stuff too. I mean, good lore building. So yeah, I mean, we we all anybody who watched Naruto knew that they would be high up there. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, if you watch that conversation too, yeah, where, yeah. We, where we, we, I mean, we broke down that just because it's Philly it. doesn't mean it's not necessary. Exactly. I mean, you've got to build lore in some way, oh, wow. and so nice. that usually comes in in yeah, backstory and exactly. what people most consider filler episodes. So yeah, it's like yeah. around a D and D where everybody's in the pub trying to tell their yeah. story and stuff. Yeah, shopping. It's the shopping trip. Shopping. Yeah, the shopping episode. Yep, <laughs> it's the shopping episode in D and D. Like what? Mm-hmm. Like everybody always brings up the Dragon Ball Z driving episode, <laughs> or the Dragon Ball <laughs> Super the baseball episode, or the baseball. What, right. I mean, think about it. Dragon Ball. No, well, low key, Dragon Ball Super would have been better if it was just mixed slice of life and action. But that's just my own honest opinion. But even Naruto, I think you needed some of that filler was necessary. For background purposes, especially mm-hmm. like Shippuden like is a Madara good example. And Obito stuff and even yeah. even even the Infinite Tsukuyomi flash with the alternate timeline. I love that. I love that alternate time. I know people hated that one, but I was like, no, I needed to. I like that. I really like that because like you were getting a version of Jiraiya's novel he always talked about writing, and I don't yeah. think people appreciate that little, those little details. Or even, like, I think one of the Infinite Tsukiyomi flashbacks was the tuning exam we missed during the time skip. Mm-hmm. Like, that was an right. excellent that was an excellent idea. Boruto's been doing it, too. And even if you're watching certain YouTube channels, they got a lot of light novels in the Boruto and even post-Shippuden era that should have easily been its own anime canon, but anime, anime students don't want to publish the light model. Prequel. I want a Minato prequel. I could see but then, that. But then I'd be like the Star Wars prequels in a lot of ways. You already kind of know what's going to happen. Okay. Maybe yeah, 10 see, times I would still want to see Jiraiya and Tsunade as ki- as like teens I with Orochimaru. See, you know, right. Like that right oh. there would have been funny. I would like to see Jiraiya and Tsunade's children. That would have been an interesting conver- conversation. Yeah. Wouldn't happen. So, but interesting. Another, like an epilogue episode. Yeah. Right. Another piece of news. Do we have any uh, kick ass fans in here? Oh, yeah. Nope. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is for you. There's going to be a kick ass three in time. What? Right yeah, three. No mm-hmm. way. I don't know if they even needed yeah. two. Two was kind of a. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was a good was one, a but it was, it was just like the, it fell off. Yeah, it was a drop yeah. off. Yeah. Like, if she went on to do her own movie, I would have been more yeah. you know, into it that. Yeah. Because he kinda his character kind of just flopped in the second movie. Well, yeah. and the whole the whole thing was his his rise. It would have been more interesting to see where the daughter went. You yeah. know, yeah. like with that storyline after everything happened. Yeah. So yeah, they're doing the kick, they're trying to do a kick ass three. But um Chloe has one demand in order to return for it. Uh oh! I didn't read the whole thing yet. I just wanted to put that out there. Okay. Interesting. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Vocab. Okay. I'm gonna I'm darken the mood a little bit. Okay. So I just you been dark for a couple I'm hours. Ready. You said what? I said we've been already dark for a couple hours. Yeah, it's well, okay. I, I <laughs> I want to take a moment of silence. Uh, today is my uncle's birthday, and we lost him to COVID earlier on. So. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. Man. Damn. Sorry yeah. it, man. Sorry if you guys don't mind. No, no, no. No, no, not at all. All right. Bless. Bless. Appreciate you guys. Not a problem. Not a no problem. problem. Man, COVID's been a tough one, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. my aunt I mentioned earlier that passed. That's she got out of the hospital from COVID complications and passed a couple of months later. Wow. Yeah. Well, peace to all of y'all dealing with that stuff, man. I, I I feel like I've been fortunate, but we've had a couple of people pass too. They weren't like super, super close. Yeah. So that's what's up. Yeah. Just, just well, everybody, good as, episode. We've been saying the whole time, like keep keep your family close. Thanks. Keep your hands you know, washed. Take a mask. Take a vaccine washed. if you can. 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Got my booster today. It's as sore as hell. I got my booster set for um day after New Year's. So that be that that would have been sick. That should tell you when I got my second booster, my second shot. So I'm trying to trying to be fourth of July, but I I, I miscalculated. <laughs> now, and I want to say this, that's like just with everything else we've been saying for all of the listeners, your health, your mental health, plays a part in how your family is affected as well. Amen. Because sometimes, yeah. even if you're physically ill, if your mental and your spiritual and emotional is in a good place. It will help drive you to pull out of a lot of things. I've seen it happen. So it's not an always type of thing, but you being at your best mentally and emotionally will help those around you to be at their best mentally and emotionally. And that's why we have conversations like these. That's why we do little bits of this type of stuff. Today was heavy in it, but you know, this is how we why we do little bits and stuff like that. Um, we will be having more of these types of conversations in the months to come. So keep an eye out for those. Um, Nick, did you have anything you want to throw out there real quick as a closeout? Uh, let's see. Let me start off by saying thank you to all of you. Thank you for the invite for a great convo. Uh, always great to meet uh, fellow open human beings that are ready to chat. Uh, if you want to check me out, I'm on Instagram, uh, the composer music, uh, on Instagram, uh, RA media LLC on Instagram and, uh, NP Ramey on Instagram. Those are my three. The NP Ramey is for my voiceover work. RA media is for my, uh, media consulting and production work. And then, uh, the composers for my music production work. So, uh, you know, feel free to hit me up, ask me stuff. I, I consult on all kinds of things. I'm working with a bunch of clients. I do some artist stuff. I do some music stuff, you know, to my background has always been uh, working in entertainment and stuff. So I'm just trying to keep that moving forward and keep artists and creatives moving forward in their productions and stuff. So as you can see, I like to do crazy stage fun things. So I like to make it colorful for everybody. But uh, I really appreciate the time. It's a great conversation. I definitely want to come back and chop it up with you guys again. You can call me in on a music night. We'll even do some live music. Why not? Hey. So I'm, I'm no, down to clown. Hey. Thank you guys so much for, for the forum and the chat. It's awesome. And, and, and follow Panda of Pandemonium, to... please. Yes. And and what he what he didn't mention is we're going to end up having a cyberpunk uh, D&D type game that we eventually yeah. we're going to run through, too. Uh, so. Cyberpunk Red. I actually start GMing a Cyberpunk game starting after the first of the year, so I'm really excited about that. And hopefully, maybe I'll get to bring it to the channel. We'll do a stream and test it out. I can send you guys some character sheets, and we can oh, play yeah. this out. Hey, I'm good. Word. I'm glad. I'm glad you to meet some so fellow sensitive. brothers oh, that are boy. into some <laughs> geeky, fun stuff. It's so nice. Thanks. All so right. And be blessed, everybody. Gangsta Thank geek. You. <laughs> well as always we appreciate you all being here for the three hours that we we've been chopping it up we know we get long-winded so thank you thank you thank you yeah. for sticking around uh as always we got vocab we got rob we got infamous today we had our man nick the composer Ramy, uh and it's always your hey, yo, man, the pandemonium signing off y'all enjoy your week and we will catch you all next week all right